and I can't wait to show you how to bring more delicious dishes into your kitchen. Waste. From your rotten produce to your leftover takeout containers, there's a lot of it in the food system these days. A recent study found that the average U.S. household trashes about 30% of its food. That adds up to a mind-blowing $240 billion a year, literally going in the garbage. I know waste seems like a huge problem to tackle when you're just one person, and corporations need to do their part. But a few small changes can make an impact. So today, I'm all about that low to no waste lifestyle. I'll be cooking with an expert in the sustainable food space, social star Max Lamana. Then I'm headed to a restaurant that composts all of its food waste. But first, my fridge needs a little love. So I'm headed to a low waste grocery store and it looks like I've got some packing to do. I'm about to head out to go to Precycle, which is a zero waste grocery store in Brooklyn. The thing about a zero waste grocery store is that there's no packages, so I've got to come prepared. And luckily, I love being prepared. So, I'm gonna start packing up. Precycle was started by Katerina Bogatereva in 2018. Her goal? Eliminate wasteful plastic from food packaging. In 2019, over 140 million tons of single-use plastics were thrown out globally. While bulk bins for dried goods have existed at health food stores for many years, Katerina had a different vision. A one-stop shop with everything from flour to produce and even cleaning supplies. All without single-use packaging. Why did you decide to start Recycle? Well, actually, it started with my own personal struggles to, to live a, a lower waste um, mm -hmm. lifestyle. Uh, when my son was five years old, he was in a kindergarten and he had a sustainability lesson. So one day he came home and he said, Mommy, do you know how long the plastic will remain in a landfill? And at that moment, it sort of like made me realize that we have a responsibility towards um, next ge future generations. So I took a very close look at my own trash at home and um, I realized that a lot of the waste that I create actually comes from food shopping, whether it's a packaging or food waste itself. So we can <laughs> thank your son for this establishment? In a way, yes. You know, it feels like a really big challenge, right, for people to overhaul all of their life choices. It's possible to shop uh, with creating less waste in, in any store. It's just kind of seeing seeing the right products. For example, I don't know, instead of canned beans, we, one can buy dry beans in a bulk store using a fabric bag, or just shopping in the perimeter of the store for um, unpackaged produce, or going to farmer's market. And I think a lot of people get really excited when they go to a grocery store and they want to get everything, right? Exactly, yeah. I think shopping for one or two meals or a couple of days in advance is the key because one tends to buy a lot and then with every day that that product sits in your fridge is less likely you're going to use it um, and that creates a lot of waste. Katerina, not to brag or anything, but I came very prepared. So tell me how I get started. Okay, it's very easy. So we're gonna just weigh your, your containers okay. um, so that we know what to deduct when we check you out. All right? All right, let's do it. Let's do it. Here I go. Here go. And the weight is 0.97. We're gonna write it with this um, washable marker. Oh, that's edgy. There we go. Perfect, and then you're gonna deduct this from whatever I'm putting in here. Exactly. Amazing, that's so easy. Forgot containers? Don't worry. The store has a selection of glass jars and reusable bags. So Sama, what are you making today? Honestly, what am I not making today, Katarina? <laughs> but actually, I came here specifically to make a pasta. Oh, wonderful, I have a really nice selection for you. Let's come go. this way. So this variety is amazing. Where do you source all of these amazing ingredients from? So about 95% of all the products in the store are sourced locally and about 80 hyper-locally. So wow. um, this pasta is from New Jersey and this is uh, made uh, in upstate New York. Wow. I also loaded up on my favorite kitchen staples like moong dal, cashews, and of course, a ton of dates. This is the only appropriate size to get some medjool dates, okay? Precycle even has extra virgin olive oil and honey on tap. Even the tofu here comes without wrapping. 
feels very overwhelming on where to start. Do you have a couple easy, actionable tips for somebody looking to reduce their waste? Some of the simple ones are reusable water bottle, your own coffee cup if you go to a coffee shop, or just simply bringing a bag. Or if you want to challenge yourself, and maybe that's the next step, you can also look into just what waste you're creating and pick an item that you can replace or, or source differently that works for you. Um, I think it's a very individual journey. It's, it's the, it, there's no recipe that yeah. fits all. Single-use plastics are nearly impossible to avoid at most grocery stores. But shopping at Precycle gave me a new perspective on what's possible. Thank you so much. Thank you. So it's nice to meet you. Nice and thank you for having me in. It also had me wondering, how can I waste less in the kitchen? Up next, I've got a virtual cooking lesson with Max Lamana, a vegan chef known for his tasty and sustainable recipes. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. News is happening now. A look at what's making headlines around the world. We're coming on the air with breaking news. This is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. News is happening now. A look at what's making headlines around the world. We're coming on the air with breaking news. This is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. NBC News, streaming free now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Back at my apartment, I couldn't wait to get cooking. To help upgrade my low-waste game, I called on London-based chef Max Lamana. Max is a vegan social star who focuses on sustainable cooking, and I am here for it. Max, it's so good to see you and chat with you. We are online Instagram friends, but not real life, and this is as close as we're going to get right now since you're in London. Uh, hopefully when we meet in real life in IRL, we'll, we could be friends as well. We can be friends and we can cook in person, but for now we're cooking online. Can you talk to me about your background and also what you sort of specialize in when it comes to food? Yeah, I'm a low waste chef. Uh, I started cooking maybe about 15 years ago. Uh, my first job was in a pizza restaurant and I've kind of just worked every single position in a restaurant. So yeah, a few years ago I started seeing the, the, the problem that we, we're all currently living with because at the end of the day, it's not just food that we're wasting, it's money, it's time, it's energy, it's water, it's transportation, it's packaging. There's so much that goes into the production of food that just throwing away food doesn't make any sense. In 2019, Americans threw away over 133 billion pounds of food. The major culprits are typically fresh fruits and fresh vegetables and uh, potatoes and bread. So. A lot is being thrown away, um, but we as consumers can make small changes every day to waste less food. On Instagram, Max teaches his one million followers easy, low-waste food tips. One in particular went pretty viral. Yes, you really can eat an entire strawberry, stems, leaves, and all. Okay, I'm really excited to get cooking with you, so can you tell me what we are making today? Are you ready? We are making cauliflower alfredo. That's it. Simple. Easy. But Delicious. there is a little no waste secret because we're going to use the entire thing, right? The entire thing. Nothing's going to waste, Sama. Everything. Yes. The core, the leaves, even this guy right here, the florets. Everything. First up, 
prepping our cauliflower. I just have a saucepan of water behind me and that's on a low boil right now. It doesn't get much simpler than this. You don't need to prep or cut or do anything. You just literally take the entire cauliflower, submerge it in the water for about five minutes until it gets fork tender. Um, but I am gonna put some salt in there. You with me, Sama? I'm with you, but I'm just gonna chop it up super roughly before I add it into my steaming basket. You know, you can also save your leaves, and if you were, if you wanted to, you can roast them in, in the oven, and they would be nice and crunchy and crispy, a little soft and tender on the inside. Without further ado, Sama, I'm, You're gonna I'm pop ready it to in? give this cauliflower okay. a bath. The cauliflower steams for about five minutes, just until fork tender. Now, on to the garlic. What you can do with garlic peelings. Um, you can actually eat the whole entire garlic peeling as well, um, but we're not gonna, we won't do that here today. You're not gonna demo um, that for me? I'm upset. I won't, I won't, I won't <laughs> demo that for you. I'm not, I'm not gonna eat it. No, I'm not. So, two things you can do. You can dehydrate the skin uh, once it gets nice and dried. Uh, you can blend it into a powdery uh, consistency, and that can be uh, basically a powder that can go into any kind of like soups, stews, or stir fries. The other thing I like to do is that I actually keep my peelings. Yeah, I keep my peelings and we'll make a veg stock afterwards. Max sauteed his garlic in olive oil for a subtle sweetness, but I'm leaving mine raw for a spicier kick. So I love this recipe because it, the sauce is super easy. So you're literally just adding all the ingredients into a blender. I'm just gonna cut right down the cauliflower. My cauliflower is finally done. Ta-da! Okay, so we're both adding our cauliflower uh, florets, stems, leaves, all of the above. I will add my garlic and pasta water. Okay, so I'm gonna add my garlic in, and then I'm also going to add a little bit of my reserve pasta water, just a touch. And this will just help it blend, and also it's a nice way to not waste our pasta water. It gets everything really nicely nice and velvety. You are using silken tofu for this recipe, right? And I'm gonna right. use hummus. So this is kind of a nice alternative. If you don't do soy, you can try it with hummus. If you do like soy, you can try it with tofu. So we've got options for everyone. And what do you options. think the tofu adds to your Alfredo, Max? Uh, tofu is adding protein, but it's also adding another layer of creaminess as well. Maybe a lighter creaminess than the hummus, but still creamy. Do you have lemon in yours? We have. Lemon. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna grab my lemon. Yep. And I wanna ask you what you do with lemon peel. The, the peel itself has so much flavor in it. If I'm gonna use the juice, I use the zest first and then use the juice. The other thing I like to do as well, if I'm not gonna use my lemons in time, I blend the whole entire lemon. Really? With some water and then I pour them into ice cube trays, freeze it, and next day I have frozen lemon cubes. And then I can add some, you know, sparkling water. That's really nice, I'm gonna try that. Half the lemon gets zested right into the blender. The rest is saved for later. We've got a lot of our elements in here, but now we're gonna go in with some nutritional yeast, right? A little bit of yes. cheesiness, a savory flavor. All right, what yeast. are you adding next? I'm gonna add some vegan Parmesan. Nice. So this is cool because yeah. we've got the nutritional yeast for that cheesy flavor. You're using some vegan parm. And then the cauliflower, the tofu, the hummus, they all add these really nice, yeah, yeah, like mm, creamy mm, elements, mm, right? Mm. That's, this is, this is my preparation dance for once it's all coming together. It's like, mm, mm, mm. I had some leftover veggie stock, so I poured that in for a little extra flavor. Mm, mm, I'm practicing. <laughs> Enough dancing, time to get blending again. I just hit the switch. Oh! The two creamy sauces are complete. I'm ready for the pasta. Do you also have some fettuccine? I do. I'm using fettuccine pasta. There you go. Yeah. Okay, so um, I'm gonna probably add a little bit of the sauce into the pan to start, just to get it cool. nicely coated with the pasta, and then I'll go ahead and add the pasta in there, and then I'll go ahead and add some of the rest of the sauce. 
There are some other things you can do with this sauce because there's quite a bit of it, right? Totally. So what you could end up doing with the sauce is use it for soups, use it for stews, use it for even a dip. I mean, I think having a little bit of like a, a chip in there it's is really good. Quite, quite nice. Okay, so I'm gonna add my pasta into my little pan and the rest of my sauce, it's so creamy. It's like luscious. Love a saucy pasta, so I love recipes that yield a lot of sauce because I'm like, let's go, you know? A gentle toss in the sauce ensures every piece of pasta is well coated. I'm, our, I'm, I'm ready to plate up, Sama. I'm ready to plate up too, Max. Okay, so I'm gonna save this pasta sauce for tomorrow, but you could also freeze it too, so that's another option. Time to give this pasta a no-waste taste. So we've got our pepper, we've got our lemon zest, we've got our salt. What do you want to garnish with, the lemon zest? Off on the side, just on top, some lemon zest. Beautiful. I'm happy with the result. How's it looking it on your delicious. end? It's delicious. You know what I think we both have in common is that our phones eat before us. Shall we grab a little our photo? do eat before us. Okay, ready? <laughs> I'm ready to eat. You ready to eat? I'm ready, yeah. Okay, let's do it. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. This is so unexpected and so good. So creamy. Mmm. That's what I was just gonna say, is that this is very, very creamy. So what are some yeah. tips that you have, some other tips for people who are looking to reduce their waste in the kitchen and while they're cooking? I think the most practical and easy thing is to cook the food you already have before going out and buying more food, then shopping and creating a list with that shopping list. And stick to that list, don't go off the list, buying other different bits and bobs, like stick to that list. Um, but before you go there, I think find recipes that work with your schedule. Donating food is a great option, but also my favorite, compost. Composting food shows that food is going back into the earth, back into the soil to give rich nutrients to the soil, giving rich, uh, rich nutrients to the plants that grow our food. Max, this was so much fun. And thank you for doing your work and educating and inspiring people to cook and eat no waste and low waste. It's incredible. That's delicious. This recipe is going to be on repeat for me. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. News is happening now. Are you ready? Look at what's making headlines around the world. Right now on Morning News Now. We're coming on the air with breaking news. And this is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Hallie Jackson now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. NBC News. Streaming free now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Composting is a crucial part of a low-waste lifestyle. At Papil Gustative in Santa Monica, the owners are committed to composting 100% of leftover food. 
They operate their own kitchen to compost facility where scraps are turned into nutrient rich mulch. Let me show you around uh, how our low waste establishment. Let's do it. Papil Gustatif translates to taste buds in Latin. It's run by Kalen Senchak and his wife Marina. They use simple but effective methods to cut down on waste. So starting with the to-go, everything is compostable. Starting from the lids, uh, the trays, of course the napkins, and all the cutlery is made out of wood or out of compostable uh, material, paper straws, even our uh, trash bags, if you see, there's a special trash bags that are compostable as well. Even the restaurant's napkins are hand-sewn from recycled jean scraps. And to avoid plastic in the kitchen, chefs use only glass bowls and containers. And what happens, Kaylin, to maybe the fruit or vegetables that aren't perfect when you receive them? We make jams, we make pastries, and for that we actually look for, for fruits and, and vegetables that might be aesthetically blemished, right, but they are perfect. And we, we hate to see the farmers uh, have to throw those away. You have a really huge compost mission with this restaurant. Can you show me how that's kind of done back here as well? Yes, this is our own compost, which is coffee, food, greens, eggshells, avocado peels, everything else. Eggshells even? Yes, That's of course, amazing. eggshells. Eggs eggs and coffee actually are one of the best things that you can feed the, the soil for plants, yes? Because of the calcium, because of all the other nutrients. So that's that makes your garden beautiful. I am so excited and ready to try your food. Kaylin, should we get into it? Absolutely, let's try everything. Let's do it. Marina and Kaylin are both passionate about building sustainable habits, which led them to the food industry. What was your inspiration behind starting this restaurant? First, we actually were inspired just to open a coffee shop. Uh, coffees and tea, single origin, uh, like really good quality. But then eventually people were asking us about more. They wanted food, they wanted breakfast, they wanted lunch, and we expanded gradually. But Kaylin and Marina are just as focused on what happens after the tables are cleared. You own the composting process from start to finish, even the facility. Can you tell me about that process from start to finish? We have this uh, little property in, in downtown where we have another company and we are thinking why don't we use that, right? So we, we did a little research and then it, it became clear that it's very easy to compost if you really put your, your heart into it. So all you have to do is dig some holes, aerate them properly, and just mix all your, your, your compost there. And then eventually you can use it from growing crops. What do you think the restaurant industry can learn from your low waste model? Well, they will learn that it's actually very easy to do. You only have to commit, you only have to put a system in place, and it's going to make a great impact at the end of the day. You have kids, and this mission is really important to saving our Earth, right? Absolutely. We're doing it for uh, the future generation, we do it for our kids, we do it for everybody. For their kids and their kids and yes. for all the generations, yeah. The food here speaks for itself. They even have vegan croissants. Yes. This makes me so happy. I like, can never have croissants. It's very important for me to take a photo of everything because otherwise I'll forget and this is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. After lunch, my leftover scraps went straight into the compost bin. No food waste. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. News is happening now. To look at what's making headlines around the world. We're coming on the air with breaking news. This is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. News is happening now. Look at what's making headlines around the world. Right now on Morning News Now. We're coming on the air with breaking news. And this is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Who is this? For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. News is happening now. To look at what's making headlines around the world. We're coming on the air with breaking news. This is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. 
Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. In Santa Monica, California, Papil Gustative is on a mission to stop food waste. I helped load up the truck that will take their kitchen scraps to the restaurant's very own composting facility. Kevin Conaway is Papil's expert composter. Compost for that, so. Cool. The composting site is located about an hour from the restaurant. Here, they've transformed an empty lot into an urban garden. What are we doing today? What you need to know about composting is that there's not much to know. <laughs> okay. It's pretty much just layering it up. Once we put everything in, what happens in the process? Microorganisms are going to eat the food. They're going to break it down, and pretty much it'll just disappear. It'll all just it'll all just be wet, and we keep it wet, just just a little bit of water. Okay. If it gets too dry, that it slows everything down. It's best to compost in a shady area, so Kevin dug up large pits by trees. But you can also compost in any kind of container, from a storage bin to a trash can. All right, Kevin, I'm ready to compost. This is everything we're composting today, right? Yep. First, we made a layer of green materials, which is basically anything left over from the kitchen or garden. Think veggie scraps, coffee grinds, eggshells, and plant trimmings. Stuff it out, yeah, make a mess. Yeah. And then I can toss the bag in too, right? That's right. Then we added carbon-rich brown materials. This can include shredded paper, cardboard, twigs, and dried leaves. And what do those layers do? What is the cardboard, the sticks? Why are we adding that to the compost process? Because if you have all or all scraps and no cardboard or no carbon on top of it, it just turns into a mushy, gooey mess. Then, just continue alternating with green and brown layers until the waste is all used up. Okay. Woo! I'm a compost queen. I have become one with the compost. Meat, dairy, and oils should only be broken down by industrial composting facilities. They can attract unwanted pests like rats and flies in a home garden. Meat can also contain harmful bacteria like salmonella, which can spread throughout a garden's edible plants. How long does it take for a compost to break down, Kevin? Generally, anywhere from six months to a year. If you keep it moist, it, it'll be pretty much ready to go in six, nine months. Finished compost is a nutrient-rich mulch. It's a deep brown that basically looks just like dirt. So what have you been growing then with the soil that you kind of can create through the composting just process? Just vegetables, mostly. OK. What yeah, kinds of vegetables? Mostly, yeah. Anything. Peppers, tomatoes, anything that Colleen thinks he needs for his uh, menu, then we'll plant it. This compost garden is still a work in progress, but by next spring, it will produce enough food for regular restaurant use. Kevin, it's really interesting because Vernon is such an industrial area, right? And you're literally creating a compost facility right in its backyard. You don't need a plot of land to compost. You can literally compost in an apartment, be on a smaller scale this kind of material in a landfill, it doesn't really break down and do any good. So instead of throwing them in the landfill and just going to waste, we can recycle those nutrients, put it back into the soil. Kevin, thank you so much for teaching me how to compost. It was shockingly way easier than I expected. And I will be back to reclaim my duties as your apprentice composter. <laughs> thank you. Managing food waste is a massive undertaking and many changes can only be made through legislation. The EPA found that less than 10% of U.S. households had access to curbside compost collection in 2017. That's a lot of food we could be saving from landfills if we just had compost bins next to recycling and trash. Some big changes are already in the works. Major cities like Los Angeles and New York are expanding city-run composting. And those advances are due in large part to individuals petitioning for better policies. Sometimes it takes local changes to kickstart a global impact. Showtime. 
I was sitting here thinking uh, before you sat down, I was like, my goodness, this man, I mean, you've been playing in venues all over the world since you were 12, 13 years old. I was like, from Star Search to this. Yeah. I mean, when you think of that part of your journey, does it make this extra special? I mean, it does, because I'm kind of collecting from all of those experiences to now bring me to Las Vegas where I can do things my way. And, you know, just really celebrate being a showman. You know, a little bit of acting because of the theatrical nature of it, the classic songs that have been made number one by the fans who come here. Uh, there are impromptu moments where it becomes about me and the DJ and I'm kind of out in, in the audience. And there's impromptu things that literally happen in this huge production of a show because I have a live band. Uh, but, you know, there's dancing, there's characters, there's singing along, there's great energy. You can't, you know, have a career of 30 some odd years and, you know, not celebrate all of the hits. The hardest problem is selecting them. I was just about to say, because people come and they have their favorite albums, they have their favorite songs. And we're talking decades of music. How do you do that? Do you give them little snippets of songs? Do you try to get all the big ones in? I have what's called um, the donut. The donut is the moment inside of the show that's like a treat. So if there is a song that, you know, somebody whispered to me doing meet and greet or either okay. I was walking around and, and her, you know what? We really want to hear this song. If I didn't put that song in the show, then I actually perform it with my band or I have my DJ throw it on and we just sing the song. This show is really my, my take, like my theatrical take on a bit of an immersive kind of journey of how these songs have taken me places or either we've shared yeah. these songs in our real you know, experiences in life. But, you know, it is theatrical. There are, there are moments that are kind of like, you know, they take you to a club in Atlanta, take you to somewhat of a Parisian club where there's, you know, characters in that club and each person plays a role and then the energy goes up and it becomes super sexy time and then we're kind of on demon time and then we kind of move to a place where it's just fun and free. I mean, you could take your show anywhere, you could go on the road, but what is it about Vegas that you said, you know what, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do a residency? Opportunity. You know, if I think of all of the people who come here and the fact that they use this place to celebrate their entire history mm -hmm. and their creativity, this room acoustically is amazing, the sound is amazing. I get a chance to put on a show and not have to travel all around the country, you know, and kind of inconvenience the family that I have now because I got kids that are going mm -hmm. to school, babies that are learning how to swim, mm -hmm. and I want to spend that time uh, still, you know, nurturing my career and, and, and enjoying that, but being able to still be there and be the dad that I want to be. Your favorite moment of the show, this show. Mm. Do you have a favorite moment? Mm. Doing it. <laughs> the favorite moment of the show is actually doing the entire thing like there's this anticipation that this this entire panel right here rises uh at the, the beginning of the show yeah okay and i feel like a giddy like little kid like i go back to like my childhood and me having these visions of like performances and dances you know our kids look in the mirror and they see something else or they're yeah. using their imagination yeah. for me i go back to that kid <laughs> and i'm like man I'm just so excited. And then the door comes up and there they are. And I'm going to put on a show to remember. Second, um, the most incredible moment of the night is when I'm out there okay. with my DJ. I told you about the donut, mm -hmm. right? That moment when I'm just playing those records, it's no production. It's literally, literally just the hit record or the moments. Sometimes it's a B-side. I'm like, oh, I just didn't even know that they remembered this of song. Of course they remember. Yeah. yeah, I mean, but hey, you know, yeah. it's really uh, exciting to know that people have been with me all this time. Cause I'm just creating, I'm just, again, being a vessel. And when I hear it, when I see people sing the words, when I, I see them emotional, when I, I, I watch them go through these, these phases, like they don't realize they're looking at me, but I'm literally watching their expression and where they made this connection. Oh, I remember the first time I sang this song and like with their friends laughing, singing the song cause they've been together throughout the years. I see all that. And That's it just good. gives me the energy. It's like ultimate joy to be able to offer somebody else that type of joy. This is a lot. And I know this didn't happen overnight. Yeah. How long did it take to put this whole thing together? Man, uh, it took a lifetime. I mean, the music that I built or the creativity that um, I'm borrowing from, as I've said, you'll see moments that are choreographic for my fans, they're like, oh, they remember certain moments from videos, mm -hmm. or they remember certain wardrobe moments. Mm -hmm. um, 
you know, the relationship to create the wardrobe for this show has been a dialogue throughout the years. I worked with Oswald Boateng and I worked mm -hmm. with Micah Mary, uh, Jerry Lorenzo, uh, Fear of God, and, and we created, you know, a wardrobe that would tell a story as well. Man, the physical aspect of it, it took, I say, to gather all of it musically, probably about two, three months. Wow. You know, I worked with OTBA, uh, who did an amazing job, uh, Simon Hammerstein, uh, Akamon Jones, uh, Rio Henson, Henderson, sorry. And, so it's a whole. Yeah, it's a whole, and Amy, Amy Allen, all of these incredible people who choreographically helped me tell this story. You know, rather they were actually there with me. Because here's another thing about my crew. Everybody here that's working has either worked with me or for me at some point, mm -hmm. when I say choreographically, or either we dream and talked about this thing that would happen here. Mm -hmm. So to have it all come to fruition over the lifetime that it took to make the songs, or either the two, three months that we you know, went through all of the choreography and all the lighting cues and all the songs and trying to figure out how to make them perfectly work together for this two hour incredible experience. I, only, I didn't do it alone. I'm gonna take you backstage actually and show okay. you some of the wardrobe and some of the other things that, you know, that we do behind the scenes. So here's the thing, yep. I totally underestimated yep. the magic behind the scenes or how many people it takes to put on a show, really and truly. Yeah. You would think I would know, but there are a lot of people behind I'm the Willy scenes. I'm Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory. Yeah. I mean, for real. Yeah, this is it, yeah. Yeah, and I'm the Wiz. Like too. You know what I'm saying? Uh, absolutely. Yeah, you get a chance to see how it works behind the scenes. You know so let's, we're gonna take you behind the scenes. So what will we find? This is like just, just chill space. Okay, you now, need chill space. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. So you got the ladies yeah. over here, they're now getting ready for the show. Okay. <clears throat> Hair and makeup in here. Hi, ladies. Dancers, performers, everybody's in here. Glam, all the things. And I try to keep a vibe going, as you know, this yeah. is kind of blue and red. Oh, so this, you, this is your doing. Yeah, I, I can't, I, yo, when I'm backstage, I can't lose, like, the vibe. I have to keep the sense. energy. Yeah. And I tell you, this is an immersive experience. Yeah, you know what I'm so even for you. Yeah. Yeah. But there's, like, health and wellness. It's like the wellness room mm. where we have um, acupuncturists and also two massage therapists that are working back here. This is in the wow. bottom room. This is where they work on all the magic, like, Arturo, who is the greatest, yeah, the Nirvana room. Yeah, I'm like, what's that? I want to see. <laughs> Arturo and Christina. The Nirvana room. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. What are you guys doing? Uh, Some of everything. Pieces, pieces for I see rope, fur, <laughs> fabric, <laughs> all the things. Yeah, so. What are they doing here? They're Ash? working on wardrobe for the show. Just, you know, there's always something that needs a nip and a tuck or either sure. to be fixed or either adjusted or gusseted. Because okay. we're dancing, performing in real time, and there's sometimes, you know, wardrobe changes, sure. ideas, you know, things that kind of just elevate the show. Yeah. But they do all of the wardrobe fixes and also to creation. Yeah. Where the magic happens. This is where the magic happens. <laughs> there you go. We realize that y'all are like an important piece of the machine. I would, I would The most important yeah, piece. Yeah, absolutely. Of the so, are we ready? last but not least, the band room. Hi, band room. Hey, how's everybody? Hey, Wait, this might be my favorite room. Hey, and I'm not just saying that. It's that's like, the worst thing no, no, I, have I said that yet? Nope. See? Oh, <laughs> it's just like chill vibes. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is what y'all do before the show, guys. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Well, it was nice to meet you. Spice water. Spice water. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. I don't think I can go to just a plain old concert anymore. No. Like after this, the, you know what I mean? You can raise the bar. I'm trying to up the ante. So you guys kind of take up the whole space? Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. I love it. It's yeah. like a family reunion. Yeah. This is good. Thank you. Yeah, from you this know what? I'm going to cool. show y'all one thing that I don't normally show anybody, right? <laughs> so normally my physical therapy room, just see. so you understand, so okay. this kind of is dubbing for two spaces, right? <laughs> this is kind of like my health and wellness space. Okay. I got like a cold dip, literally, that I have to go into, you know, just to kind of keep my myself from inflammation. Wait, like an ice bath? Yeah, it's an ice bath. Is it literally like, ice? You want to go feel it? Yes. You don't believe me? Wait, Freezing for real, cold. For real. Yeah. I mean, like I'm an like, athlete. I'm a full. I'm a but full I mean, time. like how you perform. Let me see. Oh heck no. Oh no. <laughs> what the, what, what the heck? <laughs> Seriously? Yeah. Oh, no. For, like, how long? Uh, it all depends on how bad it is, you know? <laughs> does it really help? Yeah, it does. I found different methods of therapy to really help my body stay in tune. You know, it's like, how am I able to do all the stuff that I, I do? I wonder, quite frankly. A lot of massage. Yeah. 
you know, a little therapy here, ice therapy, cryotherapy when I'm outside, and I got an infrared sauna right here to oh, sit wow. in. I wondered about that. I mean, the dancing, the energy that it takes. Well, we're moving like athletes. Yeah. You know, we have, you know, similar injuries. It might be a twist of an ankle or, you know, or something that's just out of place yeah. or either a muscle that spasms or something like that if you're not right. having enough water. Remember, we're in the desert, so everybody's encouraged to drink a lot of water. Yeah. We got this sweating. I think this is important to see because I think people just think y'all just get out there and just like. Oh, we make it look easy. Yeah, you do. You make it look easy. No, but this is good. in our changing world. Download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. They're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. I remember when you were on the Today Show not too long ago. Yeah. And they said, Chanel, you're going to skate with Usher. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> I knocked in your dressing room door. I'm like, Usher, yeah. can you roller skate? And you're like, no. It's terrible, I'm right? not that good. And then you go out there. <laughs> And you're like, next level. Yeah. Did you grow up skating? I, well, I grew up skating in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and then in Atlanta. I think everybody uh, skates there as well. But it's, it's something that we do in the South a lot. But you go to places where you can dance, sing, listen to music, skate. So bringing that culture now forward with flippers as we launched mm -hmm. at Rockefeller Center in New York City, um, I got a chance to bring a little bit of that in here. I built an entire skating rink inside this um, space, right? And I feel like skating yeah. is coming back, but I feel like when people are here, whether they're from Wichita, whether they're from LA, like once they're here, it's just like they have a moment to just put everything on hold and have a good time. Two trains of thought for me. Okay. One, something that is athletic, that kind of challenges you, and there's music. No different than working out in the gym. You listen to music, you pump iron, you run on a treadmill, you're on a bike. So you get a little bit of a sweat and you work out. You know, some of the issues that you may be, sure. you know, just holding on to. The other train of thought is, we're all kids again. Yeah. You probably more than likely found skating on quads when you were a kid mm -hmm. or rollerblades, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It just brings this energy that is all about joy, all about fun, all about celebration with your friends. You meet people, you have a good time listening to new music, get motivated by somebody's style, get better at it if you choose to. Yeah. You know. But um, for me... I wanted to offer something that um, is just about joy and fun in this time of my life. Look, I've been doing this it. for a long time. And I think we all need something that just brings joy back to us. We've been locked away because of COVID or either restrictions in certain you know, state cities. So just to go back and have fun for two seconds, but be in a space where you can, you know, display some kind of energy and, and, and feel good about yourself you know you sweat a little bit <laughs> but you feel good when you when you look out there and you see people just having fun that to me is, is what I love about skating and, and this freedom that I'm having right now to just be creative and just go back to how I did things when I first started when I decided 25 years ago that I would do things my way I said I would have fun so I'm just having fun and that's keeping me young that's keeping me that's keeping my energy right. I'm actually even able to celebrate with my kids. I'm able to literally skate with my kids too and just dream. share that same joy that I had when I was their age. That's a dream. Yeah, it is. I was just reading, I, didn't, I can't believe it. it's been, it's been 25 years. We're almost at the 25th anniversary yeah. of my way. Yeah. She likes it my way. Does it feel like 25 years? 
No, it doesn't. I was literally 19 years old when I did that album. JD was 25 years wow. old when we uh, we did that album. Um, but yeah, it was it was a monumental moment for me. Um, we we're gonna do some really incredible things uh, this year with it. We're relaunching the album, and I did a few uh, remixes uh, with a, with an incredible producer by the name of Ryan Carr. Uh, we remixed nice and slow. You make okay. me wanna, and it's gonna really be cool. Top story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at seven on NBC News Now. Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. News is happening now. To look at what's making headlines around the world. We're coming on the air with breaking news. This is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. NBC News, streaming free now. News is happening now. Look at what's making headlines around the world. Right now on Morning News Now. We're coming on the air with breaking news. And this is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. I have a question for you. Okay. So when you're on the stage, it seems like these days I have been trying to put my phone down to be present and, you know, I'll capture it for a second, but then I want to see you with my eyes. I want to be where I am. Do you ask people to put their phones down? Like, how do you do that as an artist these days? Typically in a Broadway or either Las Vegas show, you don't bring out your phone, but in a concert you do. Mm -hmm. I welcome people to bring their phones in uh, and the work for me is to captivate them so much to the point that they don't want to pick them up. <laughs> and if they do, they're literally like, oh, I don't want to miss something. There's so much going on. Mm. Like, it's like by the time you realize, wait a minute, I'm completely immersed in an experience mm. where it's not about what's being captured here. It's what's being remembered in the moment. And that's really what this was. I, I, I think that we all need to be more present. Mm. I think we all need to, you know, just maybe put the phone down a moment and, and be present with each other and enjoy this incredible gift that we have to be vessels. You know, my creativity is for the purpose of helping people through hard times. You know, being able to sing songs that bring you joy, you know, allow you to have sadness and get over things or get through things. Mm -hmm. uh, we gotta be present in that moment. We should be present at a concert. I Absolutely. think, hopefully, I have under promise and over delivered with this residency. Cheers to that. So on that yeah. note, some artists come and go and they have hits. You've been able to crank out hit after hit, new ventures, you keep evolving. Yep. How do you do it? Pay attention to the wins and remember the losses. Mm. Yeah, pay attention to where you are because when I say pay attention to the win, that's more than likely the moment when you begin to become relaxed and you're like, mm. oh, I got it. No, remember the loss and remember the moment when it was hard. Mm. How do I continue to do it? Man, I collaborate with some incredible writers, some incredible producers, incredible creatives, and we make things that are real. We try to be as present as we can, talk about things that are real, and celebrate life, good and bad at times, whether you choose to call it good or bad. Because, you know, when you're talking about a song about heartbreak, you're crying, you're mm -hmm. hurt, but you're learning something, you're living through something, you're learning the process of life. Sometimes you go through something to get to something. And then we celebrate. Mm -hmm. Cool. But music has always assisted us in that way. For every great moment, 
there's a song to go with it. Mm. For every sad moment, there's a song that goes with it. So I just, I be that vessel. God made me who I am. He gave me this gift. And I'm going to continue to do it the way that I want to do it. Um, I love it. I it's love working. It. I told you I do this series, this mom series, where I interview the moms of people that we admire. Yep. So I talked with your mom. And she talked about the passion that you've always had. But she also talked about the work and how much work you put in since you were a little boy. What don't we see as far as the work, even from all those years back to even now? What don't you see? I mean, the, the hours. You know, when you look at this idea of the, the big show, the lights, this thing that we've created in this time, the work that it took to get here, it didn't always look like this. Mm. That's the thing that you didn't get a chance to see. You didn't see, or maybe you haven't chosen to, to look at the fact that it all starts the same. It starts with ambition. It starts mm. with passion. And that's really what has led me. You don't get a chance to see the time that is sacrificed. Uh, away from family. I'm pretty sure there's other kids out there like that, that you know, are trying to figure out what am I, where am I, what do I like, what do I spend my time focusing on. The more hours you put in focusing on that, the more likely you are to be success. So I always say um, be committed and um, it ain't gonna always be pretty. Have you found balance? Have you, are you able to be present with family life? You've got four beautiful kids yeah. and you've got this life. How do you juggle it all? Well, being able to be here in Las Vegas has given me that opportunity to find more balance. So I said, you know, I'm traveling around the world, I'm setting up a stage, I'm tearing it down. So I save a lot of time, money, and there's nothing more important than time. Mm -hmm. Money is what it is, right? Time, you can't get back. So being able to have that time to go with Sire and Sovereign and, and teach them how to swim or either be in the pool with them and help them understand swimming those are genuine moments to pick them up in the morning and laugh, help them, you know, help Navid figure out what he's going to do, you know, with his uh, you know, his career. He really wants to be an actor. So I'm I was like, going right. to ask you about that. Or did you see a creative bug in any of them? I think he loves theatrical things, um, but and he's 13, so he's trying to really figure out exactly which way he wants to go. It's always been like a show kid. He's loved, you know theatrical plays and loves all types of music. But now seeing him act in theatrical plays, I'm like, man, he really does have what it takes. He's just got to really get focused without any pressure, not trying to push him more than he should, but I want to be a supportive dad and encourage him. Maybe I know a thing or two about it. I don't know. <laughs> uh, and then Usher, Usher being able to be here at, at, um, at basketball camp, being able to see him athletically, you know, really you know, find his thing, you know, find what he wants to do, the position he's going to play, rather he chooses to do that or go in a different direction. But I know that time means a lot to them and it means even more to me to be able to have it. So Las Vegas gave me that opportunity to do this, be creative, but still have my time as a dad. My dad wasn't there for me. Uh, so I'm happy that I'm able to kind of fix all those things that I didn't necessarily have with them. Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. News is happening now. Look at what's making headlines around the world. Right now on Morning News Now. We're coming on the air with breaking news. And this is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Who is this? 
people loved you on The Voice. Do you like that part of the job, being a mentor to young people or maybe the generation of folks who are coming up behind you? So many people look to you because you've had such a long career. I feel like I was born to do it. Mm. I feel like literally uh, I'm an example. Uh, and I feel like I'm setting an example. Uh, I ain't perfect. None of us are. But what I can use is my experience to be able to help people find their passion and help them stay connected to it. I am the artist that I am. I am the man that I am because of the mentors that I had. Excellent. So, I mean, everybody from Virgil Roberts, who was an attorney and also to, I look at him like a father, you know, mentors and big brothers like Tyler Perry, like Russell Simmons, like L.A. Reid, like Sean Puffy Combs, mm -hmm. like, you know, Jermaine Dupri, uh, like Harry Belafonte, all of these incredible people who are like, handpicked family and people whom I, I have an incredible relationship with because I get honesty from them because they, they listen. We listen to each other. We support each other. They actually support me and help me, you know, understand certain things. Terry Lewis, I was just talking to him earlier mm -hmm. this morning and we just, he didn't have to take 30 to 40 minutes to just sit on a call with me and talk, but to know that at this point I still have that kind of connection means more than anything. And I feel like you've been reaching out for years. I remember, you know, even Bieber. Like, didn't you help him gazillions of years ago? You saw him, his talent, was it on YouTube? Or what yeah, was it? well, his discovery uh, through me and uh, my partner, Scooter Braun. Yeah, that was the beginning of his career. He's obviously done extremely well. Yeah, when you see Bieber now, what, do you, what crosses your mind? It's just love, mm. you know, you know, with all of the noise of this world, to know that you have somebody in something that's still real is important. And I promised uh, him from the beginning that I would try my best to be that. I love that. Yeah. Finally, who do you listen to? Who's on your playlist? Who's on my playlist? Mm -hmm. Man, I wish I could tell you. I've been so immersed in this show. Really? Um, yeah, I mean, but every night there's this uh, party that we do at On The Record, which is right outside, is another immersive experience in addition to this show. Uh, I do a party that kind of that kind of takes you to a different world. My whole thing is always about immersive theatrical experiences, okay. if you haven't noticed. I love it. <laughs> I keep saying it over and over again. Well, it's forward thinking, too. It's not just going, you see a stage, and you're not part of it. I feel like we're part of the you're experience. In it. See, I'm, I'm, I'm here. There you go. There you go. But, yeah, we listen to old school music. Like, in that party, it's like R&B rules. That right there is the energy that I, I always wanted for Las Vegas. I wanted to do or offer something that I didn't think existed here in Las Vegas. This is an opportunity, a grounds for me to incubate ideas and be creative and really take like ownership of this place. You know, I look at, you know, what I see. I wasn't a part of it. I only think I was born when the Rat Pack were doing what they were doing. Mm. Right. And now having that opportunity to do something or things similar to what they were doing in that time where they were really celebrating. Those guys came together and they celebrated. So I'm out here with my guys, we partying, having a good time, doing shows, laughing, doing comedy. Me and T.I. out here, Kevin Hart, you know, Dave Chappelle, uh, uh, Jamie Foxx. Usher, oh, sure. this is epic. Yeah, like, do you hear yourself? Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. just a dream. This is a whole new Vegas. I'm, I'm like a different type of ambassador, you know what I'm saying? And giving you authenticity and, and pieces here, glimpses of what has happened or what you get from Atlanta, but you're getting it in Las Vegas, running it out here, making sure we keep it steady and fun and authentic, you know what I'm saying? What do you want your fans to walk away with when they see this show, this oh, residency? Man. Get ready. Get ready because there's more to come. You know, even though you're looking at this, this is really a celebration of the past. But now, we're here in the present. In the future, if you enjoyed this, Wait to get a load of what's happening next. Yeah. Cheers to that. Yeah. Thank you. I'm Good. home, baby. The Today Show's newest fan. Little Al Roker.
Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Pop Star Plus. I'm Jacob Soberoff, filling in for Carson. Coming up, we have got everything you need to know about last night's Emmy Awards. We're going to recap the winners and all of the big moments. Plus, we're going to hear from our friend and Emmy's host, Kenan Thompson, including the shows he loves to watch. And as the world honors Queen Elizabeth's life and legacy, we will revisit our conversation with Getty Royal photographer Chris Jackson, sharing his favorite photos of the Queen. But first, here's today's Pop Star. We've added Dylan to the mix. Good Jacob's morning. covering for Carson. What time is it, Mr. Roker? Best time of the morning. The best time of the morning. Ladies Pops and gentlemen, up. your pop start. Here we go. First up, the Brady Bunch. The Emmys made for a very Brady reunion last night. The actors who played Brady siblings Greg, Bobby, Cindy, Peter, and Jan, too, in the iconic 1970s sitcom hit the red carpet together, and Emmy host Kenan Thompson had a fun surprise for fans of the show. During the opening number, he celebrated some of television's most famous theme songs and put a fun spin on the Brady Bunch theme. Watch this, guys. Here's the story of a lovely lady who was bringing up three very lovely girls. All of them had hair of gold like their mother, the youngest one in curls. <laughs> Let's go! Yes, keep it in the middle wow. is the best part. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome, the original <laughs> cast of the Brady Bunch! <laughs> I love it. Taking you wow. to the club oh, this yeah, morning. Right? Oh, uh, just need Marsha, and then you'd have the full... Do need a little Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. All right, next up, Kelly Clarkson, the talk show host, is hitting the road. She kicked off season four of the Kelly Clarkson Show right here in New York City. And what a better way to celebrate than with a Kelly Oki. In a show-stopping mashup, Kelly covered classics like Willie Nelson's On the Road Again, so good. Madonna's music and Aretha Franklin's Freeway of Love finishing off strong with a little Taylor Swift. Should we just hang it up and watch the rest of that performance? Yeah, that's yeah, a good one. Yeah. We're like, oh, I know. I just keep playing it. Anybody can nail a mashup. Yeah. yeah. Kelly Clarkson. Oh my gosh. She's so good. By the way, you can watch the Kelly Clarkson show weekdays mm -hmm. right here on NBC. And finally, our special guest for Pop Start. It is a very exciting day for the one and only Dylan Dreyer. Her new book, Misty the Cloud, Yay! Friends Through Rain or Shine, is out. <laughs> uh, by the way, the second in a series, the first one, a New York Times bestseller. Well, thank you. Tell us more. Yeah, uh, you know, the first book, when it came out, Rusty was born right before it released. Yeah. So I wasn't able to do, you know, all this in person. Yeah. It was all on Zoom. Uh, but now, you know, more than ever, with three kids at home, uh, mm -hmm. the concepts of compromise and mm -hmm. sharing and kindness, <laughs> more important than ever. And, you know, since the story takes place up in the sky and this imaginary world in the clouds, uh, when you have Misty and her cloud friends and Ray and her sunbeam friends learning about compromise, beautiful things happen. I mean, mm -hmm. what happens when it rains and it's sunny at the same time? Oh. 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 Your concept from the second you told me about it because I think it's so fitting for little kids. Like yes. their moods, they are like weather yes. systems that kind yes. of blow in and blow it's out. And this is such it, a good way to put it. It's funny how it parallels the weather, you know, yes. the emotions, and it, it kind of puts a, a face to it. And it also, of course, you know, because I love explaining science to kids in a way they can understand. The back of the book is all about weather and rainbows in this sense and how they're created. Well, you could do some experiments. Can I do it? Go we've, ahead. Been we've been waiting for this book because we've worn out your other one. <laughs> 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 when is the next one? Today is the day. Today is the day. So. A rainbow is a full circle. It's a spoiler from the book, but a yes, rainbow is a full circle. Know? I did a little yeah. reading Wait, before. a rainbow yeah. actually makes a full circle, but the horizon cuts it in half. Well, I just, we wanted to, I know that. I just noticed that you dedicated this to Calvin. So guess what? Two more books. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. We gotta get there. Cal Calvin was my co-editor on this oh, whole thing. Um, if he didn't like it, it didn't make it in the book. Wow. So. Right. And there's more you need to know, including more Kelly Clarkson news. She teamed up with the legendary Dolly Parton to deliver us a duet of Parton's classic hit, 9 to 5, 40 years after the original. Check this out. The 
dynamic duo recorded this song as part of the upcoming documentary, Still Working 9 to 5. Starring partner herself alongside stars like Jane Fonda and Lily Tomlin, the film chronicles decades of real-life workplace inequality and the women's rights movement. Still Working 9 to 5 premieres this Friday in select theaters. Coming up next, Hocus Pocus 2. The Sanderson sisters are back in a new trailer for the very highly anticipated sequel. Bette Midler, Sarah Jessica Parker, and Kathy Jimmy reprise their roles as the quirky witches returning to Salem to stir up so much more trouble. Watch. I have a gift for my favorite customers. Legend has it, it's on the 16th birthday that a witch gets her powers. Candle. We have to get out of here. The witches will be here any second. Ah! The, the book is alive. He woke up. <gasps> oh. All right, now Hocus Pocus 2 hits Disney Plus on September 30th. And those are your Pop Star Plus headlines. Coming up next, a recap of last night's Emmy Awards. Stick with us to see who won big. We'll be right back. News is happening now. Look at what's making headlines around the world. Right now on Morning News Now. We're coming on the air with breaking news. And this is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks for being with us here on Pop Start Plus. Maybe you missed last night's Emmy Awards or you need a recap of all the winners. Well, lucky for you, Jason Kennedy brought us everything we need to know from the biggest night in television. This was exactly what we needed, right? A show filled with lots of laughs and some really touching moments. For the first time since 2019, the Emmys were back at the Microsoft Theater here in L.A., where the brightest stars of the small screen took home TV's biggest award. The White Lotus! Taking the top floor at this year's Emmys, HBO's hotel dramedy, The White Lotus, winning 10 awards, including now Best Limited Series, concept. Supporting Actor, and Supporting Actress for the hilarious Jennifer Coolidge, who refused to be played off stage. Hold on. Wait, hold on. Okay. Ted Lasso! Also scoring big, Apple TV Plus' Ted Lasso with four awards, including repeat wins for Best Comedy Series, Lead Actor, and Supporting Actor. This show is about good and evil. It's, this show is about, like, the truth and lies. This show is about uh, all that stuff. Succession! HBO's hit Succession, winning Best Drama for the second time. Other Emmy repeats include Gene Smart's lead actress win for Hacks, Julia Garner's third supporting actress win for Ozark, Zendaya! and Zendaya clinched her second lead actress for Euphoria. At 26, she's the youngest two-time Emmy winner ever. I try my best every night. I try to like sit down and I like, make my list of all the things like I'm grateful for. SNL veteran Keenan Thompson hosted the fun-filled show, which returned to a pre-pandemic format with nominees closely seated at tables. TV is all we have, from Netflix and chill to Paramount Plus and eating dinner alone. There were also plenty of firsts, 
Lee Jung Jae won lead actor for Squid Game, the first actor in a non-English series to take the prize. And an emotional Lizzo scored best competition program for her show Watch Out for the Big Girls. When I was a little girl, all I wanted to see was me in the media, someone fat like me, black like me, beautiful like me. <laughs> Cheryl Lee Ralph. But perhaps the most moving moment came from Cheryl Lee Ralph. And I know who broke into song and earned a standing ovation after winning her very first Emmy, no, Best Supporting Actress for Abbott Elementary. I am here to tell you that this is what believing looks like. Man, what a night. And we have even more on the Emmys. We could not let the show pass without a breakdown of all of the fashion and Xana Roberts, Rossi stopped by to guide us. Let's welcome in E-New Style host, Zana Roberts Rossi, right there last night. Caught the red eye. You made it in. We're happy to see I you. always heart felt it up that carpet for you, you know, ladies in top fashion. Rank it on a scale of 1 to 10. You've done so many of these I, red I carpets. I think it was an 8. It was really wow. good fun. And you know what? The Emmys carpet is much more relaxed, so it really ran yeah. the gamut. You have razzle-dazzle to paired back glamour. Wow. So who who are in your top list? Who are some of your faves? I want to start with Hannah Waddingham. We just yes. saw her in the tape that yeah. she looked fantastic. She had this great Dolce and Gabbana dress on. Mm. So this was basically took eight weeks in the works. It's a tulle dress and she was absolutely phenomenal. She balances that line between uh, fairy tale and old school Hollywood and it was took 250 meters of tulle to create it's this And those sneakers the made sneakers, it. The sneakers, weren't they fun? Stop. Well, look, she's five foot 11. She doesn't need the height. No. And she was bouncing up and down from that stage, collecting awards oh. all night. So it was kind of the perfect addition. Let's talk about Amanda Seyfried. Uh, she won her first Emmy, which was which was great news. It was great. She looked gorgeous, she too. She looked gorgeous in Armani yeah. Privé. Yeah. Yeah. So this was a fully mesh crystal gown. Ooh, wow. This Pretty. was off, off the runway. Her stylist, um, Elizabeth Stewart, told me that she'd seen this dress, walk the runway, and literally ran backstage after after the show to grab it to reserve oh, it for this very night. One. It's chain mail with this beautiful wispy tulle at the top and she just looked absolutely beautiful. In real life this just glittered. It yeah. was stunning. So pretty. Stunning. How about Zendaya? Oh. She won again oh. Oh. and she she's do? ruling the red carpet yeah. as well. She can do no wrong this one. So she wore Valentino Couture. She always balances that old school Hollywood with the contemporary. Mm -hmm. She really channeled uh, Grace Kelly in this dress. Mm -hmm. The 1950s was the reference and then this Bardo-esque hairdo with the headband. I mean, it's like it, it, every headband is just sold out immediately after wow. we see this. You know beautiful. who looked great, too, mm -hmm. and, and gave a beautiful, heartfelt speech was Lizzo. <gasps> How Weren't you so it. glad that she won? So fun. Oh. I mean, and she came, and she her motto is more is more, more and is more. she Gorgeous. brought it. This is jean <laughs> Batista tulle gown. It was custom made for her, and only Lizzo can twerk in a dress of this size. <laughs> yes, it she was did. incredible. She did. It was awesome. Awesome. Okay, so let's talk some trends. White. Yes. We saw a lot yeah, of white yeah, on the yeah. red carpet. Lots, lots of white. Yeah, it was kind of a nice palette cleanser, actually, mm -hmm. compared to all the razzle-dazzle. We saw Kerry Washington looked phenomenal mm -hmm. in this Ellie Saab. She had tights on, which was quite the conversation piece, because it was 107 degrees on that carpet. <laughs> oh, that my gosh. Day. However, she looked awesome in this dress with the high-low hem, the fantastic Louboutin heels, and just it's kind of a fun way of doing white. Then we moved in to um, uh, Selena Gomez, yeah. who looked very demure. Kate Young Mm -hmm. said we're definitely going in a more elegant uh, version of that with the green emerald earrings. Emerald was a big trend of the yeah. night. And, and Easter then Easter Ray. Ray. Oh, she looks gorgeous. gorgeous. Stunning in the black and white. Oh, Sergio Santa. Hudson. We're going to talk all morning. What did you wear? I wore concrete white. Oh, of course. Yeah, on trend. <laughs> she's a trend of the night. Of <laughs> if you want more on Emmy's fashions and winners, be sure to check out today.com. Next up, your Emmy's host, Keenan Thompson, sharing the shows that he enjoys watching. Don't go anywhere. News is happening now. Are you ready? Look at what's making headlines around the world. Right now on Morning News Now. We're coming on the air with breaking news. And this is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now.
Ashley Jackson now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Good evening from New Orleans. Well, nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Hey, welcome back to Pop Start Plus. Our friend Keenan Thompson did an incredible job hosting the Emmys last night. He recently joined us for our What to Watch series and told us what shows make him laugh. What I watch that might surprise people, I have to admit I watch diners, drive-ins, and dives a lot. <laughs> Like, I don't know if everybody really knows what that is, but that's Guy Fieri's uh, show, where he goes around and pretty much compliments every cuisine that there is. Between that and Carnival Eats, I just think that those shows are just like really entertaining, you know, because Carnival Eats is just so crazy. People are making, you know, so many concoctions and a lot of them are brilliant, you know, and then some of them are just like, you know, fried butter or whatever. <laughs> so that, that those are two interesting kind of, uh, guilty pleasures of mine is just, you know, watching Guy Fieri and that Camaro and, and the carnival eats people, man. It's, 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 it's wild what's going on out there in America. What I watch that reminds me of my childhood, Stranger Things, I think, checks a lot of those boxes. There's been a lot of like, you know, back to the 80s kinds of things. I think with uh, It was kind of like 80s-ish, you know, or like right on the cusp of 70s and 80s or whatever. But, you know, those are, you know, a little bit scary, so. I turn it on for nostalgia's sake for a minute and then I get up off it before I get too frightened. What I watch when I need comfort food probably is sports, which, you know, probably happens a little too often. I get a little too comfortable. <laughs> but, um, you know, sports is always, you know, that kind of cuisine. It, it's comforty, wingsy, you know, mac and cheesy or french friesy type of stuff, you know, just to feel like a man on the sidelines, that is. What I watch when I need a good laugh. Um, that's good. I watch a lot of stand up, you know. Um, I watch, I uh, listen to stand up in the car as well. I think it's me kind of living vicariously through them without me having to do stand up. <laughs> what I watch when I need to de stress, um, I, documentaries do that for me. I also watch a lot of like car shows, whether it's like rebuilds or just the general tune ups or look what I found in the backyard or you know, whatever kind of show that is, or even like monster truck rallies or racing, you know, just kind of stuff that I can just stare at without, you know, thinking too much about it. Um, so maybe not so much the tuning up because those guys explain a lot, especially Jay Leno, that guy runs through the history of every nut and bolt on a car ever. What I watch that I'm currently obsessed with, I just started Foundation, you know, Foundation, I was on episode one and I'm, I'm hooked off of that. Um, you know, and the usuals like Squid Games was crazy. Um, the boys, I'm waiting on the return of that show. Ray Donovan's got a movie coming out, so I'm watching the marathon of that. You know, I'm, I'm trying to catch, you know, as much TV as I can in between juggling life, basically. Our next prisoner is Wallace Redding. Mr. Redding, we see by your file you've served 40 years of a life sentence. That's right, sir. What I watch when preparing for SNL, depending on the night, is probably another SNL, you know, depending on who's hosting, just to kind of catch up on what they did last and, you know, 
the kind of tones that they really succeeded in, you know, and, and try to mirror that and, and go forward, basically. So um, I think the, the only teacher for that show probably is the show itself, you know, the, the, the back log of, you know, shows and episodes and moments that you can learn from is it, it's almost endless. You know, there's been so many moments for every situation, new president, new this, new that, whatever, you know, someone's, you know, been in those shoes before. So it's, it's nice to go back and look at how they handled it and then try to compare it to like what we're about to do and see if you can just match the enthusiasm, the funny, you know, the laughter and all of that. Because at the end of the day, it's all about presenting something that the world can relax and, and laugh, you know, about. Keenan is the best. Coming up, a behind the scenes look at some of the more remarkable photos of the queen. News is happening now. To look at what's making headlines around the world. We're coming on the air with breaking news. This is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Allie Jackson now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Welcome back, guys. Tributes and memories of Queen Elizabeth continue to pour in all around the world. And we thought we'd turn to a conversation we had recently with someone who often bared witness to her. Chris Jackson has captured images of the royal family for 20 years and shared some of his favorite shots with us. I've been photographing the royal family for 20 years, and it is so special to look back on some of my favorite moments and my favorite pictures from, you know, two decades of photographing this iconic family. There's one of the Queen, which I really like, um, which she, she's in kind of um, a purple dress and she's got a kind of slightly unusual expression. This particular photo is one of my favourite photographs for the Queen because it's slightly unusual and it really kind of illustrates what is so important about photographing the Queen. It was taken in an opening of a maternity ward at the Lister Hospital and there's a lovely background and the lights falling in a nice soft way and it almost looked like it, looked like it was taken in the studio and the, the reason that I find this very special is every sort of day-to-day -day royal engagement, you may or may not get a picture that stands out in the royal collection for sort of tens or maybe even, if you're lucky, hundreds of years to come. And this was just a sort of day-to-day -day royal engagement, but everything came together in a moment to create something a, a little bit different. And that's what I love about photographing the Queen, you know, she is this iconic, historic person if the light falls in the right way if you're lucky to get a nice background something a little bit different you might get an image that sort of lives on in the collection and you know that certainly doesn't happen every day the actual day of the, the queen's accession the passing of her father was the 6th of february and this picture sort of represents that moment and it's a queen working on her iconic red box where she gets her notes and letters and, and where she does her work and she's up at Sandringham in Norfolk somewhere she feels you know uh, incredibly relaxed that's what stood out for me and um, you know it's always an honor to be asked to take any photographs like this so it was very special. So Trooping the Colour, the Queen's official birthday, is really one of the most important moments of the year for a royal photographer and it's it's one of those kind of touch points where we see the royal family together on the balcony watching the fly pass, but we see them, we look back year after year, and it's like kind of a reference point, I suppose. You watch the children grow up and you see 
um, the queen at the centre of this, this growing family. And it's the look on the royal faces as they look up at the, as, as the RAF flyer above them is, is really special. So it's definitely all the pomp and ceremony and the best that Britain has to offer on the day. This particular photograph I took at Trooping the Colour, it was a, a kind of pared down Trooping the Colour in the grounds of Windsor Castle, in the quadrangular Windsor Castle during Covid. And of course it wasn't the normal Trooping the Colour, which of course is the Queen's official birthday celebration. But this enabled me to sort of capture a slightly more creative moment, I suppose, using a slow shutter speed and getting the soldiers marching past the Queen. And it's, it's quite difficult um, as a royal photographer try and create something a little bit different because you're so constrained by time and, and often sort of positioning. But this was something a little bit different and um, I was kind of happy with the results. So that was, that was something um, a little bit more creative. This is one of my favourite photographs of the Queen and, and Prince Wales and Duchess of Cornwall. So taken at the Highland Games, which is one of my favourite events to photograph up in Scotland where the, the Queen and members of the royal family spend their summers. Clearly somewhere the Queen feels incredibly relaxed and this particular photo was taken, I think, during the tug of war, um, during the Braemar Highland Games. I think the, the team had just fallen over and the Queen and the Prince of Wales, that's the Corm and the Duke of Banner had burst into hysterics. And it was just such a lovely moment. And it's one of my, definitely one of my favorite ones, a highlight of the year. Yeah, so it was a real privilege to take the, the, the Queen and the Duke of Banner with the 73rd wedding anniversary photograph in Windsor Castle in the Oak Room, you know, and it was during a difficult time after a COVID lockdown and to see the Duke's face when he opened the card from his great grandchildren, Prince George, Princess Charlotte and Prince Louis. And it's, it was that link between the generations at a time that was really difficult for people during COVID. And, you know, it's, it's a more candid picture and I think it tells more of, more of a story, but to reach a 73rd wedding anniversary for any couple was an amazing achievement. The Queen has a lifelong love of, um, of, of animals and dogs and horses in particular. And of course, she's had her corgis and her doggies. And um, there's some lovely photographs of the Queen with with um, with her dogs. And it's clearly something that makes her happy. And of course, horses we see her at Royal Ascot at the Windsor Horse Show. And this is something that certainly makes her happy. And her passion for horse racing is probably, you know, absolutely her number one um, pastime and, and, and that can't be denied. So it was fantastic to see her this year uh, when it's been a little bit more difficult for her to attend events with her mobility issues. So there were some lovely photographs of the Queen watching uh, the event from her car. I suppose one of the special things about being a royal photographer is watching and documenting the royal families, watching the changes, watching them grow. For me, the most incredible thing has been photographing, you know, uh, royal births and christenings. There's nothing more exciting than that, you know, moments of national celebration. A new member of the royal family it could be the birth of Prince Louis or Prince George. And of course, you know, milestones for the Queen, such as the Diamond Jubilee. It goes to show how how the Queen has this incredible ability to bring together the nation. Uh, we all remember her speech during COVID and how she was broadcast into the, the living rooms of the nation. She really inspired everyone to, to try and look on the positive side of things. And she has that amazing ability and unique ability. They say a picture is worth a thousand words, and Chris certainly has the proofs to prove it. All right, there you have it, today's Pop Star Plus. And as always, we'll have more for you tomorrow. Until then, thanks for watching.
mean? I have become one with the compost. I'm Sama Dada. I'm a cookbook author and recipe developer in the plant-based food scene, which is becoming more innovative every day. I'm on a mission to see how startups, restaurants, and chefs are changing the way we see and eat plants. And I can't wait to show you how to bring more delicious dishes into your kitchen. Waste. From your rotten produce to your leftover takeout containers, there's a lot of it in the food system these days. A recent study found that the average U.S. household trashes about 30% of its food. That adds up to a mind-blowing $240 billion a year, literally going in the garbage. I know waste seems like a huge problem to tackle when you're just one person, and corporations need to do their part. But a few small changes can make an impact. So today, I'm all about that low to no waste lifestyle. I'll be cooking with an expert in the sustainable food space, social star Max Lamana. Then I'm headed to a restaurant that composts all of its food waste. But first, my fridge needs a little love. So I'm headed to a low waste grocery store and it looks like I've got some packing to do. I'm about to head out to go to Precycle, which is a zero waste grocery store in Brooklyn. The thing about a zero waste grocery store is that there's no packages, so I've got to come prepared. And luckily, I love being prepared. So, I'm gonna start packing up. Precycle was started by Katerina Bogatereva in 2018. Her goal? Eliminate wasteful plastic from food packaging. In 2019, over 140 million tons of single-use plastics were thrown out globally. While bulk bins for dried goods have existed at health food stores for many years, Katerina had a different vision. A one-stop shop with everything from flour to produce and even cleaning supplies. All without single-use packaging. Why did you decide to start Recycle? Well, actually, it started with my own personal struggles to, to live a, a lower waste um, mm -hmm. lifestyle. Uh, when my son was five years old, he was in a kindergarten and he had a sustainability lesson. So one day he came home and he said, Mommy, do you know how long the plastic will remain in a landfill? And at that moment, it sort of like made me realize that we have a responsibility towards um, next ge future generations. So I took a very close look at my own trash at home and um, I realized that a lot of the waste that I create actually comes from food shopping, whether it's a packaging or food waste itself. So we can <laughs> thank your son for this establishment? In a way, yes. You know, it feels like a really big challenge, right, for people to overhaul all of their life choices. It's possible to shop uh, with creating less waste in, in any store. It's just kind of seeing seeing the right products. For example, I don't know, instead of canned beans, we, one can buy dry beans in a bulk store using a fabric bag, or just shopping in the perimeter of the store for um, unpackaged produce, or going to farmer's market. And I think a lot of people get really excited when they go to a grocery store and they want to get everything, right? Exactly, yeah. I think shopping for one or two meals or a couple of days in advance is the key because one tends to buy a lot and then with every day that that product sits in your fridge is less likely you're going to use it um, and that creates a lot of waste. Katerina, not to brag or anything, but I came very prepared. So tell me how I get started. Okay, it's very easy. So we're gonna just weigh your, your containers okay. um, so that we know what to deduct when we check you out. All right? All right, let's do it. Let's do it. Here I go. go. And the weight is 0.97. We're gonna write it with this um, washable marker. Oh, that's edgy. There we go. Perfect, and then you're gonna deduct this from whatever I'm putting in here. Exactly. I mean, it's so easy. Forgot containers? Don't worry. The store has a selection of glass jars and reusable bags. So Sama, what are you making today? Honestly, what am I not making today, Katarina? <laughs> but actually, I came here specifically to make a pasta. Oh, wonderful. I have a really nice selection Let's for you. Come go. this way. 
So this variety is amazing. Where do you source all of these amazing ingredients from? So about 95% of all the products in the store are sourced locally and about 80 hyper locally. So um, this pasta is from New Jersey and this is uh, made uh, in upstate New York. I also loaded up on my favorite kitchen staples, like moong dal, cashews, and of course, a ton of dates. This is the only appropriate size to get some medjool dates, okay? Precycle even has extra virgin olive oil and honey on tap. Even the tofu here comes without wrapping. It feels very overwhelming on where to start. Do you have a couple easy, actionable tips for somebody looking to reduce their waste? Some of the simple ones are reusable water bottle, your own coffee cup if you go to a coffee shop, or just simply bringing a bag. Or if you want to challenge yourself, and maybe that's the next step, you can also look into just what waste you're creating and pick an item that you can replace or, or source differently that works for you. Um, I think it's a very individual journey. It's, it's the, it, there's no recipe that yeah. fits all. Single-use plastics are nearly impossible to avoid at most grocery stores. But shopping at Precycle gave me a new perspective on what's possible. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, so nice pleasure. to meet you. Nice and thank you for having me in. It also had me wondering, how can I waste less in the kitchen? Up next, I've got a virtual cooking lesson with Max Lamana, a vegan chef known for his tasty and sustainable recipes. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Ukrainians were defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. And is this? Hallie Jackson now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Good evening from New Orleans. Nice to go really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Back at my apartment, I couldn't wait to get cooking. To help upgrade my low-waste game, I called on London-based chef Max Lamana. Max is a vegan social star who focuses on sustainable cooking, and I am here for it. Max, it's so good to see you and chat with you. We are online Instagram friends, but not real life, and this is as close as we're going to get right now since you're in London. Uh, hopefully when we meet in real life in IRL, we'll, we'll, we could be friends as well. We can be friends and we can cook in person, but for now we're cooking online. Can you talk to me about your background and also what you sort of specialize in when it comes to food? Yeah, I'm a low waste chef. Uh, I started cooking maybe about 15 years ago. Uh, my first job was in a pizza restaurant and I've kind of just worked every single position in a restaurant. So yeah, a few years ago I started seeing the, the, the problem that we, we're all currently living with because at the end of the day, it's not just food that we're wasting, it's money, it's time, it's energy, it's water, it's transportation, it's packaging. There's so much that goes into the production of food that just throwing away food doesn't make any sense. In 2019, Americans threw away over 133 billion pounds of food. The major culprits are typically fresh fruits and fresh vegetables and uh, potatoes and bread. So. A lot is being thrown away, um, but we as consumers can make small changes every day to waste less food. On Instagram, Max teaches his 1 million followers easy, low-waste food tips. One in particular went pretty viral. 
Yes, you really can eat an entire strawberry, stems, leaves, and all. Okay, I'm really excited to get cooking with you, so can you tell me what we are making today? Are you ready? We are making cauliflower alfredo. Yes. That's it. Simple, easy. But Delicious. there is a little no waste secret because we're gonna use the entire thing, right? The entire thing, nothing's going to waste, Sama. Everything, yes. The core, the leaves, even this guy right here, the florets, everything. First up, prepping our cauliflower. I just have a saucepan of water behind me and that's on a low boil right now. It doesn't get much simpler than this. You don't need to prep or cut or do anything. You just literally take the entire cauliflower, submerge it in the water for about five minutes until it gets fork tender. Um, but I am gonna put some salt in there. You with me, Sama? I'm with you, but I'm just gonna chop it up super roughly before I add it into my steaming basket. You know, you can also save your leaves, and if you were, if you wanted to, you can roast them in, in the oven, and they would be nice and crunchy and crispy, a little soft and tender on the inside. Without further ado, Sama, I'm, You're gonna I'm pop ready it to in? give this cauliflower okay. a bath. The cauliflower steams for about five minutes, just until fork tender. Now, on to the garlic. What you can do with garlic peelings. Um, you can actually eat the whole entire garlic peeling as well, um, but we're not gonna, we won't do that here today. You're not gonna demo um, that for me? I'm upset. I won't, I won't, I won't <laughs> demo that for you. I'm not, I'm not gonna eat it. No, I'm not. So, two things you can do. You can dehydrate the skin uh, once it gets nice and dried. Uh, you can blend it into a powdery uh, consistency, and that can be uh, basically a, a powder that can go into any kind of like soups, stews, or stir fries. The other thing I like to do is that I actually keep my peelings. Yeah, I keep my peelings and we'll make a veg stock afterwards. Max sauteed his garlic in olive oil for a subtle sweetness, but I'm leaving mine raw for a spicier kick. So I love this recipe because it, the sauce is super easy. So you're literally just adding all the ingredients into a blender. I'm just gonna cut right down the cauliflower. My cauliflower is finally done. Ta-da! Okay, so we're both adding our cauliflower, uh, florets, stems, leaves, all of the above. I will add my garlic and pasta water. Okay, so I'm gonna add my garlic in, and then I'm also going to add a little bit of my reserve pasta water, just a touch. And this will just help it blend, and also it's a nice way to not waste our pasta water. It gets everything really nicely nice and velvety. You are using silken tofu for this recipe, right? And I'm gonna right. use hummus. So this is kind of a nice alternative. If you don't do soy, you can try it with hummus. If you do like soy, you can try it with tofu. So we've got options for everyone. And what do you options. think the tofu adds to your Alfredo, Max? Uh, tofu is adding protein, but it's also adding another layer of creaminess as well. Maybe a lighter creaminess than the hummus, but still creamy. Do you have lemon in yours? We have. Lemon. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna grab my lemon. Yep. And I wanna ask you what you do with lemon peel. The, the peel itself has so much flavor in it. If I'm gonna use the juice, I use the zest first and then use the juice. The other thing I like to do as well, if I'm not gonna use my lemons in time, I blend the whole entire lemon. Really? With some water and then I pour them into ice cube trays, freeze it, and next day I have frozen lemon cubes. And then I can add some, you know, sparkling water. That's really nice, I'm gonna try that. Half the lemon gets zested right into the blender. The rest is saved for later. We've got a lot of our elements in here, but now we're gonna go in with some nutritional yeast, right? A little bit of yes. cheesiness, a savory flavor. All right, yeast. what are you adding next? I'm gonna add some vegan Parmesan. Nice. So this is cool because yeah. we've got the nutritional yeast for that cheesy flavor. You're using some vegan parm. And then the cauliflower, the tofu, the hummus, they all add these really nice, yeah, yeah, like mm, creamy mm, elements, mm, right? Mm. That's, this is, this is my preparation dance for once it's all coming together. It's like, mm, mm, mm. I had some leftover veggie stock, so I poured that in for a little extra flavor. Mm, mm, I'm practicing. <laughs> Enough dancing, time to get blending again. I just hit the switch. Oh! The 
two creamy sauces are complete. I'm ready for the pasta. Do you also have some fettuccine? I do. I'm using fettuccine pasta. There you go. Yeah. Okay, so um, I'm gonna probably add a little bit of the sauce into the pan to start, just to get it cool. nicely coated with the pasta, and then I'll go ahead and add the pasta in there. And then I'll go ahead and add some of the rest of the sauce. There are some other things you can do with the sauce because there's quite a bit of it, right? Totally. So what you could end up doing with the sauce is use it for soups, use it for stews, use it for even a dip. I mean, I think having a little bit of like a, a chip in there that's is really good. Quite, quite nice. Okay, so I'm gonna add my pasta into my little pan and the rest of my sauce. It's so creamy. It's like luscious. Love a saucy pasta, so I love recipes that yield a lot of sauce because I'm like, let's go, you know? A gentle toss in the sauce ensures every piece of pasta is well coated. I'm, more, I'm, I'm ready to plate up, Sama. I'm ready to plate up too, Max. Okay, so I'm gonna save this pasta sauce for tomorrow, but you could also freeze it too, so that's another option. Time to give this pasta a no-waste taste. So we've got our pepper, we've got our lemon zest, we've got our salt. What do you want to garnish with, the lemon zest? Off on the side, just on top, some lemon zest. Beautiful. I'm happy with the result. How's it looking it on your delicious. end? It's delicious. You know what I think we both have in common is that our phones eat before us. Shall we grab a little our photo? Phones do eat before us. Okay, ready? I'm ready to eat. You ready to eat? <laughs> I'm ready, yeah. Okay, let's do it. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. This is so unexpected and so good. So creamy. Mmm. That's what I was just gonna say. I said this is very, very creamy. So what are some tips that you have, some other tips for people who are looking to reduce their waste in the kitchen and while they're cooking? I think the most practical and easy thing is to cook the food you already have before going out and buying more food. Then shopping and creating a list with that shopping list. And stick to that list, don't go off the list, buying other different bits and bobs, like stick to that list. Um, but before you go there, I think find recipes that work with your schedule. Donating food is a great option, but also my favorite, compost. Composting food shows that food is going back into the earth, back into the soil to give rich nutrients to the soil, giving rich, uh, rich nutrients to the plants that grow our food. Max, this was so much fun. And thank you for doing your work and educating and inspiring people to cook and eat no waste and low waste. It's incredible. That's delicious. This recipe is gonna be on repeat for me. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. News is happening now. To look at what's making headlines around the world. We're coming on the air with breaking news. This is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. News is happening now. To look at what's making headlines around the world. We're coming on the air with breaking news. This is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now.
Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Composting is a crucial part of a low-waste lifestyle. At Papil Gustative in Santa Monica, the owners are committed to composting 100% of leftover food. They operate their own kitchen-to-compost facility, where scraps are turned into nutrient-rich mulch. Let me show you around uh, how our low-waste establishment. Let's do it! Papil Gustative translates to taste buds in Latin. It's run by Kalen Senchak and his wife Marina. They use simple but effective methods to cut down on waste. So starting with the to-go, everything is compostable. Starting from the lids, uh, the trays, of course the napkins, and all the cutlery is made out of wood or out of compostable uh, material, paper straws. Even our uh, trash bags, if you see, is a special trash bags that are compostable as well. Even the restaurant's napkins are hand-sewn from recycled jean scraps. And to avoid plastic in the kitchen, chefs use only glass bowls and containers. And what happens, Kaylin, to maybe the fruit or vegetables that aren't perfect when you receive them? We make jams, we make pastries, and for that we actually look for, for fruits and, and vegetables that might be aesthetically blemished, right, but they are perfect. And we, we hate to see the farmers uh, have to throw those away. You have a really huge compost mission with this restaurant. Can you show me how that's kind of done back here as well? Yes. This is our own compost, which is coffee, food, greens, eggshells, avocado peels, everything else. Eggshells even? Yes. That's of amazing. course, eggshells. Eggs, eggs and coffee actually are one of the best things that you can feed the, the soil for plants, yes? Because of the calcium, because of all the other nutrients. So that's, that makes your garden beautiful. I am so excited and ready to try your food. Kaylin, should we get into it? Absolutely, let's try everything. Let's do it. Marina and Kaylin are both passionate about building sustainable habits, which led them to the food industry. What was your inspiration behind starting this restaurant? First, we actually were inspired just to open a coffee shop. Uh, coffees and tea, single origin, uh, like really good quality. But then eventually people were asking us about more. They wanted food, they wanted breakfast, they wanted lunch, and we expanded gradually. But Kaylin and Marina are just as focused on what happens after the tables are cleared. You own the composting process from start to finish, even the facility. Can you tell me about that process from start to finish? We have this uh, little property in, in downtown where we have another company and we are thinking, why don't we use that, right? So we, we did a little research and then it, it became clear that it's very easy to compost if you really put your, your heart into it. So all you have to do is dig some ho holes, aerate them properly and just mix all your, your, your compost there and then eventually you can use it from growing crops. What do you think the restaurant industry can learn from your low waste model? Well, they will learn that it's actually very easy to do. You only have to commit, you only have to put a system in place, and it's going to make a great impact at the end of the day. You have kids, and this mission is really important to saving our Earth, right? Absolutely. We're doing it for uh, the future generation, we do it for our kids, we do it for everybody. For their kids and their kids and yes. for all the generations, yeah. The food here speaks for itself. They even have vegan croissants. Yes. This makes me so happy. I like, can never have croissants. It's very important for me to take a photo of everything because otherwise I'll forget and this is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. After lunch, my leftover scraps went straight into the compost bin. No food waste. Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. NBC News. Streaming free now. Ali Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now.
Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Allie Jackson now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. In Santa Monica, California, Papil Gustative is on a mission to stop food waste. I helped load up the truck that will take their kitchen scraps to the restaurant's very own composting facility. Kevin Conaway is Papil's expert composter. Compost for that, so. Cool. The composting site is located about an hour from the restaurant. Here, they've transformed an empty lot into an urban garden. What are we doing today? What you need to know about composting is that there's not much to know. <laughs> okay. It's pretty much just layering it up. Once we put everything in, what happens in the process? Microorganisms are going to eat the food. They're going to break it down, and pretty much it'll just disappear. It'll all just it'll all just be wet, and we keep it wet. Just just a little bit of water. Okay. If it gets too dry, that it slows everything down. It's best to compost in a shady area, so Kevin dug up large pits by trees. But you can also compost in any kind of container, from a storage bin to a trash can. All right, Kevin, I'm ready to compost. This is everything we're composting today, right? Yep. First, we made a layer of green materials, which is basically anything left over from the kitchen or garden. Think veggie scraps, coffee grinds, eggshells, and plant trimmings. Stuff it out, yeah, make a mess. And then I can toss the bag in too, right? That's right. Then we added carbon-rich brown materials. This can include shredded paper, cardboard, twigs, and dried leaves. And what do those layers do? What is the cardboard, the sticks? Why are we adding that to the compost process? Because if you have all or all scraps and no cardboard or no carbon on top of it, it just turns into a mushy, gooey mess. Then, just continue alternating with green and brown layers until the waste is all used up. Okay. Woo! I'm a compost queen. I have become one with the compost. Meat, dairy, and oils should only be broken down by industrial composting facilities. They can attract unwanted pests like rats and flies in a home garden. Meat can also contain harmful bacteria, like salmonella, which can spread throughout a garden's edible plants. How long does it take for a compost to break down, Kevin? Generally, anywhere from six months to a year. If you keep it moist, it, it'll be pretty much ready to go in six, nine months. Finished compost is a nutrient-rich mulch. It's a deep brown that basically looks just like dirt. So what have you been growing then with the soil that you kind of can create through the composting Just process? Just vegetables, mostly. Okay. What yeah, kinds of vegetables? Yeah. Anything? Peppers, tomatoes, anything that Colleen thinks he needs for his uh, menu, then we'll plant it. This compost garden is still a work in progress, but by next spring, it will produce enough food for regular restaurant use. Kevin, it's really interesting because Vernon is such an industrial area, right? And you're literally creating a compost facility right in its backyard. You don't need a plot of land to compost. You can literally compost in an apartment, be on a smaller scale. This kind of material in a landfill, it doesn't really break down and do any good. So instead of throwing them in the landfill and just going to waste, we can recycle those nutrients, put it back into the soil. Kevin, thank you so much for teaching me how to compost. It was shockingly way easier than I expected, and I will be back to reclaim my duties as your apprentice composter. <laughs> thank you. Managing food waste is a massive undertaking, and many changes can only be made through legislation. The EPA found that less than 10% of U.S. households had access to curbside compost collection in 2017. That's a lot of food we could be saving from landfills if we just had compost bins next to recycling and trash. Some big changes are already in the works. Major cities like Los Angeles and New York are expanding city-run composting. And those advances are due in large part to individuals petitioning for better policies. 
Sometimes it takes local changes to kickstart a global impact. Thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. Good to be with you. Well, let's let's get started. You know, we're, we're talking about Earth Day. Uh, what's your what are your first memories of Earth Day? You know, when I was in school, you, you started to hear about it more and more. And I remember we would do events. The teacher would invite us to spend time outside or study things about the environment. I think I associated it a lot with and greenery and trees, uh, a little different than now when I think about it more in terms of invisible things like carbon pollution, but it's only become more important, more timely since then. And, and so talk to me about uh, your personal goals when it, when it comes to climate change. Well, look, when you think about the sources of greenhouse gas pollution in our economy, the number one category of that is actually transportation. And so for me, if you work anywhere in or around transportation, there, there's a responsibility and an opportunity to be a huge part of the solution. So the, the goals that I take with me to work every day uh, are both professional and personal, because they also have to do with making sure that my kids, uh, you know, I'm, uh, I'm a new father as of less than a year ago, um, that, that they thrive, but, but also of course it's very personal because uh, you know, uh, my generation is really gonna uh, rise and fall, I think, based on how good we are at facing the climate challenge. So the infrastructure bill, uh, which would be probably the largest of its kind in making our, our transportation networks, uh, our infrastructure in, in over 50 years, mm -hmm. how does that, how is that bill going to impact our goals for climate change, you know, to fight climate change? So the infrastructure law is going to be a huge part of how the American economy can rise to the climate challenge. And one thing that's especially exciting to me about this is it's also a place where we can break down this old idea that we had to choose between climate and the economy. We are creating jobs through the transportation infrastructure of the future that will also be responsible for improvements in our climate. I'll give you just a handful of examples. We're funding things like low or no emission buses, electric buses that are cleaner for the neighborhoods they operate in, and where there's gonna be a lot of job creation in manufacturing those buses here in the US. We're funding a network of charging stations for electric vehicles as more and more Americans consider going electric. Uh, you know, one of the biggest things on your mind if you're weighing whether to buy an EV is whether they're going to be uh, charging stations available if you take a lot of long road trips, the same way you know there's going to be a gas station for you when you go out on the interstate. And uh, making sure that quality transit is available for people wherever they live. Beyond an infrastructure law, does it also take and how do you implement uh, a, a change in attitude? For example, here in New York City, uh, I, I like to bike, uh, bike to work, I walk to work, but you know, people get really worked up when you say, well, we're gonna put in bike lanes and things like that. People, you know, they have been used to having unfettered access to, to uh, you know, uh, wider streets and, and plenty of parking. Well, my experience is that whenever you have something new, it takes a little getting used to. But when you have good policies for uh, having safe pedestrian or, or, or bike passage in addition to uh, streets being for car traffic, when you do all of that together, once you get it right, people would never want to go back. Talk to me about the Department of Transportation's role in, in reducing pollution and, and, and trying to fight climate change. Well, the way I would say it is that every transportation decision is a climate decision, whether you recognize it or not, for the simple reason that transportation is such a big source of emissions. If we make sure that there are cleaner buses, then we're benefiting a neighborhood and benefiting the climate. If we make sure that there's a, a good way to get around, whether you have a car or not, we're creating options for people that takes congestion off the road, and that means less pollution. Anytime that we make a decision about how people or goods move around, whether we're talking about trains or even ships and aircraft, 
uh, we're making a decision about our future too, how sustainable it's going to be, how safe it's going to be, how healthy it's going to be. And I believe that the 2020s will be remembered as the deciding decade, certainly within transportation, but really across our whole economy, for whether we successfully face this climate challenge. What has been the biggest pushback against the infrastructure law? And, and how do you push back against the pushback? The biggest thing is, I think, uh, some skepticism, maybe some healthy skepticism about whether this is really going to make a difference in people's lives. You, you see these big numbers being thrown around in Washington. A lot of folks are saying, okay, but is, is this actually going to make me better off? And of course, the best way to address that is results. The other thing that's really exciting about working on these issues is they don't have the same kind of knee-jerk partisanship to them that a lot of other issues do in, in Washington right now. Uh, there's no such thing as a Republican bridge or a Democratic road. Uh, I've traveled to some of the most conservative and, and liberal places in the country alike, and I'll tell you, one thing people have in common everywhere they live is a desire to be able to commute to work, get to school, uh, find their way to, to visit loved ones safely and conveniently. And that's something that, that we're working to deliver in every part of the country, no matter your politics, and no matter whether it's rural, urban, or in between. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Who is this? Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky, to cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Good evening from New Orleans. Well, nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. They're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. We're now in a moment where there's a, you know, oil, you know, gas prices are up, inflation's a problem. Uh, there's a push to ramp up oil production. Do you worry that at this moment, that kind of, that, that climate, that uh, the fight against climate change and reducing our, our dependence on fossil fuels get pushed, gets pushed to the back burner because we're worried about prices? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. I think when we're hurting because of things like high oil and gas prices, it creates a lot of pressures that cut both ways. Uh, on one hand, it, it can lead to, to more interest in, in things like fuel efficient vehicles or hybrid or electric vehicles. On the other hand, it, it creates the, the need for a lot of short term steps uh, to make gas more freely available to, to just to help people get through the season. But I think all of it points to the same long term fact which is that the sooner that we can depend on U.S.-based, renewable, reliable energy, uh, the less we're going to be subject to these kinds of ups and downs. And, and that's a reminder that we need to be looking to a future that is better for Americans, whether you're talking about health, climate, uh, or just dollars and cents. Uh, we can move toward a future that's better than the past. Are you, uh, are you hopeful about our future when it comes to the climate? I am, because I see how people are rising to this challenge, uh, whether it's the, the workers who are involved in the, the shift toward electric vehicles or people in the agriculture sector who are finding ways to uh, practice soil management that, that's going to help us. 
uh, or the, the young advocates and activists who are out there with such moral authority saying, hey, if you're old enough and in a position of responsibility right now, uh, you got to do a good job at this. Uh, I see the power of it. And, and I've seen the conversation shift from just doom and gloom, talking about the wildfires and the hurricanes and all the terrible uh, mistakes that we've made, as important as that is. I, I, I've seen that sense of urgency coupled with a sense of uh, a national project that, that right now we as a country are, are working to beat this challenge before it's too late. And there's extraordinary innovation, extraordinary creativity going into that. It's gonna mean some hard choices. It's gonna mean some, uh, some hard work, but we're doing that hard work right now. And I'll tell you, you know, if, if the work of my colleagues here at the Department of Transportation, the, the uh, public servants, many of whom have been working on these issues for years or even decades, uh, and, and the transportation stakeholders that we work with, the, the, the workers, the, the, the companies, um, if, if their commitment is anything to go by, uh, I think we have a lot to look forward to, even if this is a perilous time. Well, uh, Secretary Buttigieg, we really appreciate you taking time to talk about uh, what the Department of Transportation is up to and is in its uh, fight to try to help get this infrastructure law going and uh, working on on what we need to do for our climate. So really appreciate you taking the time, sir. Well, thank you. It's such an important subject and uh, appreciate the chance to talk about it. For breaking news in our changing world, Download the NBC News app. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. They're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Top Story with Tom Hamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. We will meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Who is this? News is happening now. Look at what's making headlines around the world. Right now on Morning News Now. We're coming on the air with breaking news. And this is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. The day's biggest political stories with trusted insight now and expert analysis now. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now. Streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. The day's biggest political stories with trusted insight now and expert analysis now. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. As we look at uh, uh, April as, as Earth Month, uh, we've got Earth Week, and of course, Earth Day. But in reality, every day should be, should be Earth Day. Uh, I, through the, the auspices of the Today Show, have been privileged to, to see these things up close, to be in Antarctica, to be in Iceland, to be in Greenland, uh, Alaska, uh, different parts of our country, where and uh, all around the world, uh, where we're seeing climate change uh, really start to have a major impact. Uh, and and we, we see it now uh, in our own weather forecast. We see it uh, in other countries as, uh, as uh, deforestation and drought causes uh, just untold suffering. And, and it can sometimes seem like a, an overarching, overwhelming uh, concept, climate change, and uh, what can I as an individual do? It's too big. I, I, I can't make a difference, but you can't. And uh, we're going to talk over this these next few minutes with uh, a number of people who are part of those who have recognized the problem and are trying to do something about it and have some ideas of what we can do as well. So uh, uh, let's start off with uh, two scientists, uh, uh, Stephanie Herring, 
who is the Geophysical Sciences and Developmental Branch Chief of NOAA's National Center for Environmental Information and uh, Ocean and Climate uh, Scientist plus Forbes contributor Priya Shukla, uh, who is a PhD candidate at the Bodega Marine uh, Laboratory at UC Davis studying ocean warming, disease, and oyster farming. So Stephanie, I'd like to start with you. Um, you, you are involved in something in called attribution research. What is attribution research? Yeah, so it's um, just like it sounds if you wanted to attribute a quote to somebody. Well, when in, in the field of weather and climate, one of the things that we, it's really important to know is to understand not just how our weather and climate are changing, but why. What are the drivers? And specifically in our area, looking at the role of whether human caused climate change and the increase in greenhouse gas emissions you know, effectively since the industrial revolution, the question is, is, has that and is that changing the weather and climate events that you and I are experiencing today? And that is really the goal of attribution research. In climate change attribution, we use something very similar. We look at the planet that we have today and we look at our risk of experiencing an extreme event based on you know, the observational record and what we know about our weather and climate today. But we have to compare that to a planet that has not experienced greenhouse gas emissions, and that planet doesn't actually exist in the real world. So we use climate models to mm -hmm. compare the planet that we have to an alternative planet that hasn't experienced greenhouse gas emissions primarily since, like I said, the Industrial Revolution. And by comparing those two, we can look, just like a doctor will look at how, you know, certain behavior increases your chance of certain diseases, we can look at how has the chance of a particular event changed on the planet that we live in by comparing it to a planet where humans have not been emitting greenhouse gases. You brought up uh, an interesting point in that, you know, we don't have a planet that is absent of human interaction. And so it's hard to judge, but what did you find in your research during the pandemic? I I'm curious about that. We did not see any change in the trend of um, extreme events being impacted by human climate change. That being said, you know, the, the science qualifier here, of course, extreme, they're not really randomly sampled events from around the world. Scientists, shockingly, are actually humans, uh, and <laughs> they um, have the same inclination to be interested in the places that they live and the places that they are experiencing. And so attribution science tends to pick events where some of the scientists are also living and experiencing these extreme events. And so it's not a, not a random sampling, for instance, the oceans are actually very undersampled because um, humans don't tend to live in the ocean. So, um, but, but that being said, in the events that were studied, the signal is still very, very strong and very, very clear that simply having two years of the pandemic um, where people's patterns did change really did not impact the weather and climate events and the role of climate, the role we found for climate change on those events. NOAA released a study, a recent study, it says uh, by 2050, sea level rise could equal 12 inches. Uh, uh, so that's got to have massive uh, ramifications for coastal communities in our country and really around the world. Sea level rise and climate change is happening on a scale that is much faster than what I, seems like humans are able to fully tabulate and comprehend and then also respond to. And so... NOAA is doing this incredible work and so are a bunch of other bodies and trying to figure out what is going to happen. But human response seems to be on a much slower scale, both probably because there's a little bit of like denial and fear and concern, but also because people are trying to make the best possible solutions uh, to things that we can only predict and haven't fully seen the impacts of only glimmers up through things like King Tide events. In doing this research, um, has there been a year where you looked at the data and you went, whoa, yikes. <laughs> Yeah, so for me, that year um, was actually the, the kind of the 2016, 27 timeframe, where <clears throat> um, it was one of the Earth's hottest on record. And, you know, for, I've been in this area for, I don't know, seven or eight years. And up until then, we'd always said, someday in the future, we will start to see events that would only have been possible because of human caused climate change, someday. And at the same time, it was, it was happening in front of us. And um, 
I think that the more we look at this, the more we're going to realize that climate change is not some kind of future thing that will happen to us someday. It's happening now, it's happening today, and it's having real impacts today in the weather and climate that we're experiencing, in addition to many, many other impacts like the ones that Priya is looking at. Uh, talk to me, Priya, if you can, about uh, ocean acidification. What is it and what are the ramifications for us? Why should we care? Yeah, ocean acidification is sometimes called the other CO2 problem. And basically the ocean is this huge sponge. So not only has it absorbed over 90% of the heat, which we've already talked about, but like excess heat that humans have emitted, but it's also absorbing greenhouse gases from the atmosphere, including carbon dioxide. And so what that causes is a series of chemical chain reactions that actually end up making the ocean more acidic and causing animals in the ocean to actually begin to dissolve. And the, it's not that the entire animal Wait, is dissolving. What do you, what do you say this again? Yeah, so basically because the ocean is becoming more acidic as a result of absorbing CO2, parts of animals are actually beginning to dissolve. And so what that means is that essentially when animals are building their hard parts, which are made of calcium carbonate, the very same thing that our bones are made of, those animals have a really difficult time maintaining that structure or continuing to build it. And this is especially true when they're really young and they're at their most vulnerable. And that's when we see that they can actually become malformed. So they look wonky as they're growing up. And we've seen this both in laboratory experiments, but also in field experiments. So this is something that is just beginning to really take shape, but we're already seeing that in places like California where every summer, cool, deep, already acidic ocean water washes ashore due to just a series of like wind events bringing deep water on shore. That acidic water is actually hitting animals right now already. And that's expected to get worse as the ocean continues being forced to absorb CO2 because we haven't really changed the amount of greenhouse gas emissions that we're mm -hmm. putting into the atmosphere. So how do we how do we change that? Can we reverse it? So that is something that is an area of active exploration, like are there ways to do this? And it's definitely right now in the thought experiment phase, but people are trying to resolve this issue on a smaller scale. On a larger scale though, that is the bigger question. And that is something that um, I hope we'll have an answer to very soon. Stephanie, as you research uh, all of this, um, are you hopeful that we can make a difference make a change, you know, modify our behavior so that, you know, if, if not reversing it, at least slowing things down? I think that we have to um, continue to to hope that the, you know, better elements of our nature will prevail here and that, um, like you said in your opening remarks, which I thought was very powerful, it is true. It seems like a really overwhelming problem. It really does. And it is. But it's not an unsolvable problem. It really isn't. The solutions are actually the technology. Many of those things are already in place today. It's more a question of, I think, whether you know we, um, as both individuals, com families, communities, and societies, mm -hmm. you know, what actions we're we're willing to take to help get us to a place where we are on a planet where yeah. you know, my children will be able to enjoy some of the same things that I've been able to appreciate over, over my lifetime. If you want more information on, uh, on NOAA's National Centers for Environmental Information and how they're providing communities and businesses with data and information for a resilient future, visit ncei.noaa.gov. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. They're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No, top story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. They're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No, Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. 
For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now? What it all means for you for an hour every day? It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Really excited. Uh, Dr. Sanjan, thank you for being with us. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Al. Thanks for having me. He is a global conservation scientist whose work uh, spans from genetics to wildlife migration to nature's impacts on the well being. He's also the CEO of Conservation International, and he's got a great new series on PBS called Changing Planet. Uh, it's an unprecedented seven year global storytelling effort, uh, latest science and local voices. Uh, it monitors climate change in uh, six iconic locations all around the world. So a seven-year effort uh, seems pretty unprecedented for uh, a television project. How, how, did, how did this idea come about? Well, um, Al, it's just getting started. So this is year one right. of a project and the idea is to document what I think is the most consequential decade in human history. Um, you know the science is clear the IPCC the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change reports make clear that what we do in this decade will fundamentally alter the trajectory of our planet. It doesn't mean 2030 everything's over it does mean the path we're on at 2030 we're not turning back. Uh, so so that's why we said seven years is the right year. We kind of count down to this decade. And then we said, well, we can't do it from one place. Let's go to, you know, six places and tell the stories of our changing planet from those places through the eyes, of the people who live there and the wildlife that we see. So how did you pick these places? Which are the places and, and how did you pick them? What we did was we looked at places that were rich in carbon that had, you know, there were iconic landscapes, you know, you're going to tell a story about climate change. Iceland is probably a good place to think about. And how can you think about climate change or the impacts of climate change in the United States without thinking about California? Like think about what the last couple of years have looked like, you know, in the summers uh, in California, with the fires, the droughts, uh, it's been, you know, it, it really has become unfortunately emblematic of the challenge. And then we thought, look, East Africa, you have humans, wildlife. Uh, we wanted coral reefs, so we thought Maldives. You know, you'll get a really good sense of an island that's sinking. Uh, Cambodia, because it's got the largest, one of the largest freshwater lakes in the world, Tomli Sap, that feeds millions and millions of people. More fish come out of that lake every year than all the lakes and rivers combined in North America. And then, of course, the Amazon. You know, we know about the Amazon and why it's the lungs of our planet, and so we thought, Brazil or the Amazon would be important. So these, this is how we sort of picked some of these locations. Obviously, we made some adjustments because of uh, COVID and our ability to travel. Uh, I think I would have loved to have Great Barrier Reef, but you know it was a bit difficult to get to Australia and get, or more importantly, get out of Australia. <laughs> uh, so, so, so there was some some things that we just had to had to compromise on. Your organization, Conservation International, uh, tell us about the work you guys do. Right. So uh, we work in the global south, almost exclusively in the global south, in about 32 countries directly and about 50 countries indirectly. And what we do is really three things. The first is we protect and restore nature for climate. So we know that you cannot get to the Paris Climate Agreement, 1.5 degrees or 2 degrees, if you don't first protect nature. It's impossible to do the math. So we think you got to protect and restore nature at scale, number one. Number two, we want to massively increase the amount of oceans under conservation. Oceans have been highly underinvested. Less than 5% is truly well protected. And we think there's a big opportunity there. And then the third thing we do, which I think is kind of the most interesting thing, is we find ways to balance production with protection. So if you can link those two things up, uh, then you can actually create sort of models of sustainability. I think sometimes people see protecting the planet, trying to mitigate climate change is a zero-sum game. You either 
do the if if you do this, you're going to kill economies globally, and that's not the case, is it? That's not the case, but we have to be honest about the cost of transition. So it is clearly not the case. So one of the neat things about the most recent IPCC report is it pointed to, you know, basically two dozen countries where the economies have grown and yet they've managed to reduce their emissions. So this is living proof that you can do both. You can reduce emissions and continue to grow your economy. I really appreciate uh, the conversation. You gave us a lot to think about. Thank you, Yao. Keep doing your great work. Over the years, I have been lucky enough to step into the Today Show kitchen and watch the best chefs from around the world teach us some incredible recipes. We had made that pesto, which was, oh, exactly. Darn. Again, I almost got that, out of this one clean. Cool. Turn it down. <laughs> oh, my God. I had one job. None of which I've mastered because, well, I actually don't know the first thing about how to cook. But I'm putting those days behind me for good. Today, Darnell Super Chef Ferguson is going to teach me his tricks for the most important meal of the day, breakfast. We're making an American-style omelet with all the fixings, the crispiest candy bacon, and a classic pancakes that everyone in my family will love. I'm feeling pretty confident about this one and I love breakfast, so let's get started. Darnell Ferguson, thank you for coming all this way. I really love breakfast. I even like breakfast for dinner. Do you ever do that? See, that's what I was gonna say. You know, we can do, we're gonna do breakfast, brunch, and some brinner. Okay, you know? exactly, <laughs> yeah. I love brinner. Our plan for today is one, Savannah will learn how to cook a flawless sunny side up egg. Two, we'll cook an American style omelet. Three, sprinkle brown sugar and grind pepper for candied bacon. Four, make the pancake batter. Five, use the griddle to make the pancakes. Six, plate and serve. This is probably gonna make you laugh. I don't really know how to fry an egg. I mean, okay. I've tried it before. I don't, I don't know, it just, I don't know how to flip it over. Could we just learn that basic thing first? Yeah. So since you don't know how to flip it over, let's start with sunny side up. Okay. Which is my favorite style of eggs. All right. right? The least cooked egg yes. is a sunny side up egg. Then you have over easy, you have over medium, and every egg keeps getting cooked more. We have our eggs right here. Mm -hmm. okay. Little one-on-one -on -one for cracking eggs is yes. never crack it on the corner. Okay. Do you crack it on the corner at home? Um, yeah. From here on out, you're not going to, okay? Yeah. So we're going to crack it on a flat surface. Right well, but then see, that wasn't Perfect. very good. See, that was easy. Should I try it again? Yeah, try another one. There Just let me try. Okay. I, this is the only way to learn, you I You were think. strong. So yeah, there you go. Okay, that Perfect. was better. See? Round two is there now. Practice makes yep. perfect. Okay, so now. So we're going to lightly just let that egg just fall right into the pan. I see you just did yolk last. Was that on purpose? Oh, no, I don't have a choice. The egg is in control this year. Okay, okay. <laughs> it's going to do what it wants to do. I'm just here as a bystander. Okay, the egg is driving. I'd be worried. I'm already feeling a little stressed like it's going to burn. No, it's not going to burn. It's okay. very low temperatures. Okay. Very low. So you don't have to worry about that. And it shouldn't stick because it's non stick pan. Yours looks like something that is not a true, like, egg, how perfect that looks. I mean, it really does. It, it kind of looks fake. Yeah, it does. Like, yours doesn't even look like a real egg. That's how good you are. <laughs> You see, that's the confidence you need. Now you're good for my good for my confidence. Okay, so we're going to get a little bit of butter. Okay. Right? And then what? And then once it melts down, mm -hmm. we're going to take our spoon mm -hmm. and we're going to just put the butter over the egg whites. Okay, that's, and that's going to help cook it. That's cool. So you're taking a hot liquid. Yes. And you're putting over your over undercooked eggs. But not on the yolk, just on the whites. Just on the whites. Okay. Here you go. I'm gonna show you this perfect egg, which is almost done. Only yes. has about another 30 seconds. How do you know it's almost done? It'll be firm. Okay. So now it's finished. Okay. Now our sunny side up egg, you've done this. Mm -hmm. Easy, just like a pro. Okay. Now we can put it on our plates. Wow. You can grab your toast plate. Okay. Making eggs is one of the easiest things, but I will tell you this. If you ever want to know how great a chef is, yes. tell him to make you eggs. Really? Why? It takes time. Mm -hmm. It takes a lot of skill. Mm-hmm. And how do you get it off the pan? So it's just going to fall right on off. Oh, you're It'll just going to kind of like yep. slide it. Just slide it right on off. We okay. have a little flaky sea salt. Okay, yes. This looks incredible, by the way. Well, you did it. See? Well. Look at this. Okay. And then but, we got a little black pepper if you like it. How do you know, though? I guess I'm still obsessed with this, like, the yolk. How do I know if it's, like, 
runny or thick enough? The yolk is the easy part. Okay. You want it runny. It's right. The, it's the whites okay. that you want cooked. Okay. So the whites are cooked. The yolk is runny. Mm -hmm. That's sunny side up. Look and at it, us. Toast. Just two chefs yep. making eggs. Cheers. <laughs> yes. You want to try it out? This is what everybody wants. Oh, my here. gosh. So good. And, of course, I like to mop it up with the toast. Yes. Mmm. That's delicious. So good. Darnell, I think we're ready to graduate to something even trickier. So you ready to go into omelet making? I am. So let's have a good toast to those sunny side of eggs that we made. We always have a cocktail on the show. I love it. I think we're mimosaing today. <laughs> Let me see. Mm -hmm. mm. That's delicious. Ease up on the orange <laughs> juice. <laughs> Omelets are fun. There's not a lot of things you cook that are fun to cook, but omelets are fun to do. Okay, I'm into this. They're fast, they'll make you feel like you're in the NBA for a little bit, because <laughs> you can do it and you'll get your confidence up. The first thing you wanna do is what we call mise en place. We have everything laid out first, and then we wanna make sure our knife skills are perfect, so the first thing we're gonna actually do mm -hmm. is the ham. I've learned a couple things about knives. You're doing great. Okay. There you go. I worry about your hands being out like that. I know. <laughs> actually, when I took piano lessons when I was six, Mr. Mm -hmm. Clorette made us do the piano like this, you know? You're supposed to have curved fingers. That's yeah. what, I need to remember that. It's a great way. So just small pieces, okay. consistent sizes. Okay. That way the omelet is pretty smooth. Mm -hmm. Okay. Here we go. This looks so good. Okay. All right, chopped enough. We got plenty of ham. Yes. Ham well, is my favorite though, so good. Ham, right. wait till you try the candy bacon. Oh, It's gonna okay. be your new favorite. I All right. Your kids are gonna love it, by the way. Let's do our eggs Eggs, now. okay. Like I learned eggs. from a very wise chef. Never on the corner, <laughs> always here. Now so we whisk. whisk it. Okay. I know this from scrambling. Yes. I usually do it with a fork. Does it matter? No. Okay. Whisk is going to put more air into it. So, a little salt and pepper in here. Okay. Oh, yes. Always salt and pepper. Okay. There you go. Like this much salt, or is that too much? No, that's great. Like, what about Remember, that? you can always add more later. Okay, I know. I, I tend to under salt, but now I've been told by so many of you chefs to put more salt that I might be over salting. How's that? Good? That looks great. Looks great. Okay. We'll whisk that together. Mm -hmm. Do you ever put milk in it or no? Scrambled eggs, I like to put the fat in there. I like to put the milk in there. And it stretches out your eggs so y'all have kids to cook for at home. Yeah. So I have eight kids. Six who stay at my house full time. So. Oh my gosh. That's why I call my wife my junior chef because she's always cooking for juniors. Oh. So. <laughs> that's amazing, wow. Okay. Before, we're gonna put a little butter in here. We're gonna yes. let it foam up a little bit. Mm -hmm. This is my big question about omelet making. When do you put the toppings in? So there's no right answer to that. Okay. You can put it in before, like we're going to do today, yeah. and let them cook a little bit. You and mean you put the, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. You put the vegetables in before the eggs? Yes, that is one way of doing it. Okay, wow, you're blowing my mind. Now okay. let's go ahead and put whatever vegetables and meats you want to put inside Okay, so this would be when I put the spinach in. Yes. Which I don't usually like spinach, but I want to learn, so I'm putting it, help it in. Help soften it up a little bit. Now these are big old leaves. Should I have chopped those small ones? No, they're going to cook down. Mm, I'll put a couple peppers. So we have this going, and remember, all these meats are cured meats, so mm -hmm. they're already cooked enough. Oh, okay. So we're not worried about cooking the meats. Got it. They're right? more like heating them up. Exactly. Okay. Let's go ahead and pour our eggs in. Okay. So this is enough? That's enough. I don't have to wait for these to be brown no. or anything? Okay. No. Okay. There you go. Pour it right in there. Okay. Ooh. Fancy. Okay. All right. So now go ahead and scramble your egg a little bit. Okay. Because we want to get everything evenly incorporated. Okay. There you go. Mm -hmm. And then now we're going to let it set. Perfect. Okay, get over there. I want it to look like yours does that. <laughs> So look, now I'm going under my egg a little bit, mm -hmm. allowing the runniness to run off uh -huh. and go underneath it. Yep. So you don't have I any don't have any runniness. So you have a little bit right well, there. Well, right there. Should yep. I just make a hole for it? There you go. We'll help each other out. Okay. There you go. And then now you don't lift. have much. Okay. Oh, but I want that. Oh, I see. So like any of this little extra bit. Yep. Now it's cooking. Mm -hmm. So we'll leave it like this for one second. So do you feel like a spatula like this is the good implement, like the you easiest? You need a rubber spatula. A rubber spatula. Yep. Okay. Would you rather just put our toppings right here and fold it over, or do you want to flip an omelet first? I think I need to learn to flip. Okay, we're going to assist the flip. It's called okay. an assisted flip. Assisted flip. I have my spatula under a little, yes. and I'm going to use that to help me flip my egg over. Oh, the whole thing? Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh, no way can I do this. Your no left way. hand is hard yes, for left-handed left people. Everything's hard for us. So go towards the top. 
Wait, what? Oh, because I was gonna, I was gonna flip it that way. But oh, you don't that's what's I... more comfortable. I'm not left-handed. Okay, so yeah. So everything's different for people. Okay, who yeah. yeah, we're special. Us so go under a lot, okay, and then you want to assist okay. it with the flip over like that. I'm scared. <laughs> it's like know. jumping in a pool. I can't. Okay, one. You have it. I know it's gonna fail. Okay, one. I don't want to ruin it. See? See? No, no you're good. but it didn't. Now you go back and you just get the rest over. Okay, but See? that wasn't good. That like, was good. Is it supposed to? No, I did it wrong. No, you're perfect. But is it? Look, it's folded now like a burrito. <laughs> you're gonna fold it over again. It's okay. Okay. So now so you'll put your cheese inside. Just leave it. Just roll inside. with it like that. Yep. Okay. Now you'll put. I like Gruyere cheese. Okay, me too. Which so one's that? That's <laughs> this one. That's that one. Yes. I like that too. So put it on the furthest point of your omelet. Oh, that's interesting. Why is that? Because you're gonna flip it over and you want all that heat to sit right on top of it. I'm gonna do, which, is this sausage? That is sausage. Sausage is yes. my favorite. Ham yep. is my favorite. I'm going for it. There you go. And all, all on the side too again. Yep, all on that okay. side. Mm -hmm. okay. You did a good job flipping. Thank you. I, you did. I don't know, I want it, but it, was it supposed to be like half like this or was it supposed to really be covering the see, whole thing? this pan? is at home cooking. You know, now if you were in the restaurant and we had to, see, this is what you're about to eat at home. So I that know. is perfect for at home. But I want to get an A, <laughs> Darnell. I want to so be that's like. That's an A, A minus, but okay. it's still an A. Okay, okay, you know? so okay. Then I want to flip my egg okay, over we're flipping to the other again. side. Oh, like another folder, like yep. this, like that? Yep, just fold it over. Mm -hmm. Yep. See, assisted, assisted with Darnell. Now, now it's getting kind of brown. Is that too brown? No, you're fine. I mean, look, this is a disaster. That is good. No, you know it isn't. And now this, these guys are falling out. Well, technically, you're going to eat them anyway. Okay. So you got to keep your eyes on the prize. But I don't think they're getting too warm. There you go. <laughs> Come on, Darnell. You know this is a fail. You don't have to be nice about it. Can I just creep those guys in? Yes. There? Okay. All right. And then we put it on our plates. That's it? Yeah, that's you, it. I wouldn't flip it again? I feel no. like it needs another flip. Flip yours one more time. See, there you go. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I like to flip a lot. This is the saddest omelet. You know it, we all know it. Let's compare. Oh, Not wonder who did what. <laughs> it doesn't so, look that bad. No, it doesn't, that's what I'm saying. Like, you're being hard on yourself. Okay. This is just one part of breakfast. Oh. We still have to do the candied bacon and the powerful pancakes. Oh, okay. So, so I'll go these get, get these on the table. All right. Ali Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. NBC News, streaming free now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. News is happening now. Look at what's making headlines around the world. Right now on Morning News Now. We're coming on the air with breaking news. And this is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. in our changing world. Download the NBC News app. Everybody loves bacon. No, everyone loves candy bacon. I was gonna say, usually if I make bacon, I just put it in the microwave. Can we still be friends? We can be friends, because if you're cooking, that means I'm eating. Friends, oh, okay. So <laughs> but candy bacon seems intimidating. Yes. Super Chefs, our restaurants, are the home of the candy bacon. Okay. This is our specialty. You cannot even come in and ask for regular bacon. We don't offer it. How do we bacon. do it? So I'm gonna open up the pack. Okay. I'll open it for you. You yeah. can get us one, I'll get us a half a cup of brown sugar okay. in that bowl for you. All right. Like just pack it a little? Yeah, pack it okay. down. We're gonna lay our bacon okay. sideways. 
So if you're cooking bacon at home, mm -hmm. the reason why the microwave isn't the best method yeah. is because it shrivels down the bacon. Well, that's true. Yep. Whereas if you cook it on the sheet tray or you cook it in the oven, it keeps the bacon the same length as the bacon. Now you have this like wire rack and foil. What's is that necessary? It's really necessary for candy bacon. Okay, okay. So we have the wire rack, that way the bacon doesn't cook in its own fat. So How'd it, you get into cooking dough now? I got into cooking by watching Emerald on TV. He was oh. my inspiration. He was very unique. And if I wasn't going to be a chef, I was going to be a Navy SEAL, so he had a really good uniform on. Oh. And I wanted to wear a uniform. <laughs> so he just, Now you have a chef's uniform. Yeah, now we have chef coats. So everyone has to wear all the... I'm going to get you a chef coat. Oh, I, well, yeah. I don't know if I deserve it. First thing we're going to do is we're going to freshly crack black pepper on top of it. How much? How much pepper do you like? A little bit. I only like a little. So I don't put, a, have... put a little bit on there. See, okay. that's the thing about cooking. It's about the person, not the recipe. I'm going to go lot. right down one piece first. Oh, <laughs> oh okay. See? You're a rebel. You just went everywhere. I, like I know. That. It's like, well, I didn't know. Now I see I should have watched you first. Yours is more classy. But so you're putting a lot on there. Well, I want to taste you something like it, besides yeah. sweet. Because mm -hmm. black pepper also has a little heat to it. Yeah, it does. And then we're going to sprinkle brown sugar on top of each piece. So, Be yeah. as attentive as you would like to. Okay. There we go. So if you want to grab these two and take them to the oven, I can okay. open the door for you. Oh, we're you. doing oven? We're not frying. Yeah. No. Always at home. Turn your oven on 400 degrees. Yes. Put your bacon on a rack and just put a timer. Oh, you really? You don't have to worry about it anymore. Okay. It'll come out perfectly and it won't lose all of its size. Oh. We'll go ahead and put these in the oven on 400, 400. for 25 minutes. Okay, got it. Does it matter which rack? No, because we're going to use both of them. Okay. Now, if we had the broiler on, then it matters which rack. Okay. But since we have it on bake, it won't matter. All See, right. See, you are almost there with candied bacon. That now. wasn't that hard. No, that was easy. Yeah. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. News is happening now. Are you ready? Look at what's making headlines around the world. Right now on Morning News Now. We're coming on the air with breaking news. And this is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. NBC News, streaming free now. The day's biggest political stories with trusted insight now and expert analysis now. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. The day's biggest political stories with trusted insight now and expert analysis now. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Who is this? Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. It's pancake time. Okay. So I gave you a personal recipe of mine. So, you know, I worked on this for years to perfect it. This is the Darnell Ferguson perfect pancake right Yes, here. this okay. is it right here. So we're going to start with the batter first. Bye-bye, Bisquick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, bye-bye. Okay. So what we're going to do first is our wet mix. We're okay. going to start with our version, well, my version of buttermilk. Okay, two cups, which you can see. Now, why not just use old buttermilk? Like, why are we using our own? Okay, so this is what happened. In the restaurant, mm -hmm. buttermilk is so expensive yeah. compared to regular milk mm -hmm. that I could not feasibly charge people what I had to for how much the buttermilk was oh. costing me. So, I figured out how to make the same exact okay. thing happen. So, milk plus, oh, this looks like a quarter cup of... Yep, the distilled vinegar. vinegar, yep. Okay, and am I just stirring this up? Nope, just let it sit. Oh, okay. Let it sit, the curdle a little bit. You see it's getting a little thicker Oh, I do see that. See? Oh, like okay. 
one milk would get. Interesting. Yep. So we have that going on. Now let's go ahead and crack three eggs inside of here. Okay. There we go. There were your shells. Okay, yeah, all right. Thank you. You you wanted to use the side of this at first. I could tell. I did. <laughs> I but I fought the urge because you taught me, and I don't want you to think I'm not listening. I am definitely listening. Thank you. Listening. Yeah. Let's try this last egg one-handed. Yeah. So the key with one-handed oh. eggs is you just want to separate it like this. That way, when you crack it right in the middle, you're just pulling it apart. Okay. Now, I don't know how this is gonna. It go. was a little nervous when I had to learn it my first time. There you go. Now you just pull it. There you go. Look. Ah! Oh Good my gosh, I, did, I, would, I would high five you, but I'm all yoking. Okay, now am I whisking these? Yep, you're gonna go ahead and whisk them okay. together. Am I trying to get air like I was for the other? Nope, the just omelet? incorporating. Okay. There you go, so perfect. Is that good? Yep. All right. So let's go ahead and add our vanilla to our eggs. Okay, let me see. It says, two, I'm obsessed with three, a one teaspoon of vanilla. Okay. One teaspoon of vanilla going right in there. This is our wet mix. That's it. So you can go ahead and pour this inside of here if you like. Okay. Ready see that? Flow? That's what we want right wow, there. Wow, look at that. How interesting, it's all lumpy. Yeah, okay. just like buttermilk. Yeah, okay. Yep, so it's mixed. So now this is where I could get kind of messy. So we'll move that to the side now, because you is, have it done and it's perfect. Is it whisked you know, enough? Oh, well, it's gonna be whisked enough now. Uh, <laughs> so now we have our dry mix. We have our mm -hmm. flour here. Yes. We're gonna add sugar. We are sugar. adding three, four, three quarter a cup. cup sugar. Okay. This says one teaspoon baking soda. Then two baking powder. Okay. Yep. You need twice as much baking powder than you okay. do baking soda when you're making this batter. Okay, good to know. There you go. So we got a little salt going in there too. How much? One teaspoon. I hate it when they don't tell me how much, you know? I wanna know. Yes. It's always like, you chefs, it's always like, a sprinkle of this, a dash of that. <laughs> like, well, what about us mortals? We don't know what to do. <laughs> okay, now, do I stir always. it? There you go. Okay. Now I'm just kind of mixing it yep. about. Incorporating it in before mm -hmm. we mix everything at one time. Okay. Flour is so messy. This is where you put the apron on in the restaurant. Yeah, you put it on at home. I really should, but I wanted to wear the sweater because we're gonna make magic. <laughs> Abracadabra. A little bit in. Mm -hmm. And start stirring. Yep. Now is this one of those things where you don't want to like, oh shoot, overmix? This is that thing. Okay. That you don't want to overmix. How's my whisking technique? Like you whisk with your shoulders. Egg. You want to whisk with your, with like your wrist. Like what? Like that? Yep. So more like, like this. Show me. You see mm -hmm. less, so, so when you're doing it, your whole arm is into it. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> you just wanna. I'm whisking. Yep. Okay. There you go. It already looks you like You see your nice air bubbles starting yes. to form. And air bubbles are okay, right? That's air what... bubbles are what's gonna make it rise. Oh. You know, it's gonna be those little pockets of air that's gonna form, so you're perfect right there. You don't need to mix. Look at you. Clean whisk. Clean I whisk. I was never worried. <laughs> so right. now we're gonna move over to this contraption here. Okay, this, this is- This is our flat top griddle, which is also my favorite cooking utensil in the kitchen. So we have it turned on 300 degrees. Okay. Look all how right. much fat is on there. That's okay. all you need. Okay, wow. So you're gonna get one ladle right there. Mm -hmm. Does this look? That looks great. Okay. Go right in the middle of that. Ooh. There you go. Okay, do you want me to do yours? Another, yep, do one for me. Mm -hmm. Now, big question would be, when do you put the toppings in? Like, when it's almost cooked, do I do it now? Always put the toppings in before you're gonna flip it. Okay. Because what happens is, if you put them in now, imagine we put these big old chips inside yes. of it now. It's gonna weight down the batter yeah. from rising. We want it to rise, right? Yeah. When do you flip the pancake? So you'll see the bubble starting to form. Mm -hmm. You'll see the outside of it starting to not break over. Now, I shouldn't be like messing with it, right? No, you shouldn't. You like to touch your food I when do. you cook it. I do. I want to see what's <laughs> happening. I got antsy. The goal is when you flip it, you don't want to flip it in and the batter runs everywhere. Why That's is it, it already smelling so good? Because I did the recipe. <laughs> it has so, a little Darnell magic. About two minutes, two and a half minutes okay. on each side. Okay. We are okay. ready to flip some now, well, pancakes. Wait. All right, let's watch the flip. We already okay. have, okay. See, I'm going under first. Mm -hmm. Make sure I got enough underneath oh, it. Sure. And then just Go a on. good flip. Mine's bigger. This is, <laughs> this is like, okay, come on. Confidence. Let's see, confidence. Come on, do it. One, do two, it. ready, go. Yes! Perfect! Look at that! Yeah, and that's perfect! Yeah, and I see you want to smash it down. I do, I no, wanted to no, so no, bad. I see I wanted to... you want to smash it down I so did. bad, I can what? tell. No, because you want it to rise. Okay. You know, allow the bacon powder, bacon soda, and the vinegar to do what they were created to do. Wow, you really get me. So let's toast to okay. your pancake flipping, mm -hmm. your omelet half flipping. Half flipping. You I'm know, working on that. But you're doing a great job. What about egg cracking? Oh, the egg was 100%. One hand. <laughs> One handed egg, egg cracking. cracking. So we're ready to go have the plate here, and then okay. our next go around, we're going to just get creative. 
Ooh. Yeah. Yum. Let's drop some more. Pack now, do I need there. to respray? Well, I'm going to wipe it down first because you okay. can see the oil now yeah. has started to burn. Yeah. I'm going to spray it up. Yep. I'm going to do yours too. Okay. Perfect. Now, let's see if I've learned this at all. How's that look to you? That's Enough? great. Okay. Now, wait 10 years while it cooks on each side. <laughs> It does take some time. I will it give does. you that. It does. Now, because the previous Savannah that had not been personally trained by Darnell would have probably flipped it right then. Because yeah. I'm like, oh, bubbles. But now I know kind of wait. Even bubbles. Patience, grasshopper. So what kind of toppings are you going to, what kind of filling are you going to put in these? I'm going I, funfetti for sure. Yeah, I think if my kids were here, they would definitely not pick the blueberries because it <laughs> seems healthy and close to the earth. Yeah. They'd go more for this. Yeah, so you're going to so do chocolate and I think butter? I'm going to do chocolate and funfetti. Is that crazy? Or chocolate and peanut butter. Now that sounds like a chocolate Snickers peanut butter made sounds in good. Yeah, that yeah. does. Okay, I'm, you're right. Chocolate okay. peanut butter. So go ahead. Now it's time. Oh Look yeah, it's time. Pancake. Okay, so now I'm gonna see how you just spread throughout or only in the middle. Oh, it's all so throughout. Fun. My kids would die over that. That's so fun. Now look, I want to flip it, now but you're now, ready. am I? Because then this is going to be right against the hot stove. That's okay? Oh, that's what we want. Oh, okay. Same time, okay. Oh, God. One. Oh, boy. Oh, there boy. Go. Stressed out. One, two, ready, go. Yes! Perfect. Okay. That's a oh, perfect look at, pancake. Look at, um, no. <laughs> you want... Almost swished it down. I'm never using the yes. box batter again. Yes. That we're looks ready. done, right? Yep. Okay. So I like to put them upside down so you can actually see which pancakes are which. Yes. Look at that. Ding, ding. That looks so good. Okay, bacon's almost done. Should we do a couple more, I guess? Yes, let's drop yep. a couple more while we get the bacon out the oven. Can you save this batter, by the way? You can use that batter for the next five days. No! So make it one time, cook a little bit that day, the next morning you wake up. That's how people cook pancakes every morning. Oh my gosh. Oh. It is that time to get this bacon. Okay. There you go, so you don't burn yourself. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you've heard about me. <laughs> oh, it smells so good. Oh my gosh, this looks incredible. Shut up. Ah, graceful as always. Okay. There you go. Man, that looks good. Look at that bacon. Oh my gosh. Yum, this is perfect. It oh. seriously looks so pro. Now I'm just trying I'm to. Extremely hungry. I know, me too. Me so too. One thing you want to do is yeah. while the bacon's still hot, yes. you want to move it off the tray. Okay. Because so. if you let the bacon sit, then it has that chance that it's hardening from, oh. the, from the candy. Hardening, okay. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so move that. Yeah. Perfect mm -hmm. gloss on top of the bacon. I mean, it looks. See perfect. a little specks of brown sugar. I imagine this is the one you make because it has less brown sugar yeah. on it. I'll take the. <laughs> it's little true, but that's good to pieces. know. I am starving now. Okay. All right, shall we? Want to grab the pancakes? Yes, let's go eat. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? News is happening now. Look at what's making headlines around the world. Right now on Morning News Now. We're coming on the air with breaking news. And this is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. NBC News, streaming free now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. News is happening now. A look at what's making headlines around the world. We're coming on the air with breaking news. This is a significant moment. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Ali Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Breakfast with the Breakfast King, let's go. Oh, and now the Breakfast Queen. <laughs> exactly, well, trying. Maybe Princess. Princess. A, the Breakfast Apprentice. Okay, my omelet doesn't look too bad. I mean, it's a little wonky, but I'm sure it'll taste just fine. Mm. Pretty good if I do say so myself. How's yours? Whoever made this knew what they were doing. 
I gotta eat the pancakes. I mean, come on. That's good. That is so delicious. It's oh my nice and light. It's light, it's fluffy. Goodbye, boxed mix. Yes. Hello, Darnell. A couple more oh ingredients to buy at the grocery store, but it's worth it. It's worth it, and it doesn't take that much longer. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Right. Now you have that to try is... the bacon, too. Okay. Oh, yeah, the bacon. You forgot all about the bacon. I know, I did, actually. That is delicious. I'm glad you like it. We love to have people over. I love to cook a big old breakfast. This is a good time to kind of show off and make it seem like you got skills. Yep, and all it takes is a little sprinkle, some chocolate mm. uh, chips, and some peanut butter chips. Oh, yeah. It takes it out to a whole nother level. And the candied bacon. That will be the star of your house if you have a party or brunch and you have that. I mean, people will never leave. Well, now you got to put it in to-go boxes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that way they know it's not for here forever. Thank you so much for teaching me. No, thanks for allowing me to be easy, understanding, and not touching the food so much. <laughs> well, I feel like you gave me some really good secrets, like some special just Darnell stuff, and I'm so honored. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Things I've just been working on for about 10 to 12 years. Yeah. Right? Gave them to you in 10 to 12 minutes. I know. <laughs> it's like all this heart. I'm really excited to oh, try it. You did a great job. Thank you. Cheers. Yes. That's right. <laughs> Good morning, it's Tuesday and all eyes remain on Fiona after devastating Puerto Rico. The already powerful storm, now the season's first major hurricane. It's September 20th, this is today. Breaking overnight, category three, Fiona intensifies on its march through the Caribbean, triggering deaths, catastrophic